For a challenge, I decided to create the weakest Project Zomboid character ever. Obese, feeble, stupid, cowardly turd of a human being. Weak Man was the exact opposite of someone that can survive the zombie apocalypse. But luckily, he was sponsored by Enlisted, and I didn't want him just to survive. I wanted to turn Weak Man into a strong man. But the longer he survived, the more challenges the world would throw at him. From a cryogenic winter to daily helicopters and zombies learning how to sprint. I had multiple side goals besides surviving for a whole year. And for the first 100 days, the challenge to overcome was to create a safe haven and beat obesity to become as strong and fit as possible, so I could achieve my second goal, raid a zombie infested military base to prepare for the next 100 days. Now relax, crack open a cold one and join me on this glorious adventure. Which began in Moldra. Now this wasn't my first attempt, but I knew right then and there it was a blessed one. <gasps> There's a sledgehammer in here, let's freaking go boys, now we talking. I decided to make this fire station my new home, and because I was weaker than an average anime enjoyer, I decided to turn it into a trap. Then I continued my loot run downstairs, picking up any object I could use for my long term survival. A couple of zeds broke in though, and weak men showed his bravery by smashing their faces in with a hand axe. In the afternoon, I caught exposure survival on the TV, and I learned the ways of fishing. Alas, without a watch, there was no way to tell the time and know when the next show's gonna begin, so I reluctantly decided to bait a couple of zombies in, in hopes of looting one. I managed to slay five of them with my masterful baiting skills, but I had no luck finding a watch. Killing five zombies was hard work though, as weak men became tired, but the evening was not without its rewards. Cigarettes, oh my god, let's fucking go. On day two, I woke up just in time to catch a cooking show on the TV. Then I snuck outside to smash up a zombie, who was nice enough to provide me with a watch, but it was not digital, so I couldn't set an alarm. I knew the next show was at noon, so I decided it was time for morning exercise, all the time hoping for some extra fries. The fact that this obese, unfit, asthmatic, weak man could do more push-ups than I could was a bit of an eye-opening experience. Holy shit, there's how to use generators in here, wow, we are lucky out, let's go. I watched the carpentry show next, then I had to crash, awakening just in time for a nighttime adventure. I baited three more zombies in hopes of finding a digital watch, but no luck. Then it was time for another cooking show. Let's go, our first level up! Oh yeah! I then spent the rest of the morning baiting, working out and watching TV, all the while starving the poor weak man. Two nice ladies came to visit me in the afternoon with a gift. She's got potato seeds, oh that's huge. So I went outside to shovel some dirt into a sack and planted my first crops on the roof, but clearly I wasn't sneaky enough. Oh fuck. How the hell did you get up here? And because I could hear zombies breaking in downstairs, I decided to isolate myself to stay safe. I woke up to more banging on day 4, it really sounded like Playboy Mansion downstairs. I knew I needed to get stronger if I was to ever survive the cruel world outside, so it was more squats and push ups for poor weak men, before I allowed him some TV time. Watching TV, watching TV, let's go, let's go, watching TV, nyeh, 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 nyeh. I slept off the rest of the afternoon to recover stamina so I could push him some more in the evening. The next couple of days flew by faster than money out of OnlyFans Sims bank accounts. I watched TV shows and cooked some questionable meals. Potato and peanut butter stir fry, that sounds delicious. I combined that with lots of exercise and book reading. I actually managed to finish Carpentry Volume 2 before the noon show on day 6, which really boosted my Carpentry XP gains. Rain began to fall as well which was good for my crops, but what was not good was all the pain from exercising that didn't let me sleep and the effects of my sleep deprivation soon began to show. More exercise? Ugh. Ugh. I reached level 2 in cooking on day 7, but unfortunately that didn't teach me not to combine potatoes and peanut butter, so I kept on eating that wild goop. Hell yeah, level 3 carpentry, now we are cooking with onions. And while I wished I had some onions to fry them with peanut butter, all I had was potatoes. And if the Irish could survive on that, weak men could as well. But since he managed to survive a whole week, I decided to celebrate with ice cream on day 8. Then it was back to reading books, watching TV and exercising. 
My strength and fitness levels were progressing nicely, mostly due to a special mod that gave me more XP whenever exercising while heavily fatigued. Pump, pump the jam, pump it up while your feet are stumping. Which made me miss the last show to ever air on the TV. No, it's done, come on! I did have big plans for day 9 though, and I went and dismantled all the furniture in my kitchen. There's gonna be so much room for activities in here now. But I didn't do this because I needed room for activities. No, I did it to level up my carpentry skill to level 4. I had to dismantle a lot more than just the kitchen to get there, but when I did, I had everything necessary to build a ladder. So I gathered up my tools, planks and nails and broke down a wall in my storage room. I then rappelled down a rope like a geriatric Tom Cruise and finally, I had a safe way out of the building. It looked pretty zombie free outside, so I decided to explore a bit on day 10. There were only two Zeds inside the fire station, which I dispatched with ease. Then I made my way to the gas station nearby. The couple inside were nice to give me a welcome gift. Holy shit, we finally have a digital watch. But the main gift were the cigarettes and the junk food I found, and even better, empty gas cans. I wanted to fill them while the station still had electricity, but then I heard it. Helicopter? Not now. Helicopter is doing it. Oh no. Oh, come on. I ran for the safety of my home and escaped just in the nick of time. But any hope of another expedition to the gas station was squashed like hopes and dreams of a Chinese child laborer when I surveyed the area from my roof. Oh, Jesus. Now there's a couple more zombies here. Holy shit. I knew I was stuck and I knew water and electricity would be shut off in the near future. While I couldn't do a thing about the ladder, I could build rain collectors to fix the water issue. I had a couple of garbage bags and I had the skills to do it, but I needed more. Oh shit. Oh, there's zombies right here. Oh no. I ran towards the gas station where I knew I could find some bags and indeed luck was on my side. I gathered five bags which was enough for two collectors. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit! And then, because I haven't pushed my luck enough, I quickly filled a bottle with gasoline at the station. I made my way back home, but of course, the Zeds were waiting for me. Alright. Let's do this. Let's do this. Come on, come on, come on! Climb, brother! Climb! Woo! That was fucking close! Safe at last, I made a Molotov cocktail from that bottle of gasoline in hopes that it will one day help me clear the area with fire. I then spent the rest of the day dismantling half of the station to get the planks I needed and then climbed on the roof where I placed two water collectors. They were positioned above a couple of sinks below that I could plumb for fresh water when it eventually ran out. I decided to lay low for the next couple of days in hopes that at least some of the zombies would leave the area. I read books and exercised and it began to show. Only overweight and out of shape now 98 kilos my dude is losing weight i also periodically checked on my potatoes which began to grow rain began to fall on day 13 and i rejoiced when i saw it filled my barrels and then i spent some time sneaking around in the roof which brought my light-footed and sneaking skills to level 2 due to the many zombies below i learned how to sprint by reading a book and i enjoyed many infrequent daytime naps Middle of the day nap, my favorite. While the evenings were spent looking at the stars, contemplating life and wondering if any dummy thick furry survived. One day blended into another. I now had a morning squats and evening push-ups routine. I began learning about mechanics and I even redecorated with what little furniture remained. But during my morning routine on day 16, it happened. Oh, the electricity just went out. Oh, come on. The power was out, which meant the days of my frozen ice cream supplies were numbered. I was supposed to be losing weight, but ice cream is where I draw a line. A snow white line of addiction. But there was another addiction I couldn't satisfy anymore. Weak man was a smoker, and so far I've been lightening cigarettes on the oven. But now that the electricity was out, my anxiety started to mount. So I threw all the caution to the wind on day 17 and decided to go back to the gas station. It's been a week since the helicopter event and the Zeds wandered into the woods and I knew the thick fog would hide me. There was one zombie behind the station and then I was in the clear. He's got a crawler friend. He's got a crawler friend. You sneaky bastard. 
unfortunately, there were no lighters at the station, but I did find matches in one of the cars, which were enough to light three whole cigarettes, but I was still thankful. There was also a gun in the car, but no bullets for it. I took out two more zombies on my way home, and then I was safe. Let's have a celebratory smoke, because that... That was job well done. I felt brave on day 18, so I climbed into my backyard to gather two bags of dirt, then I planted my potato seeds. And if you're feeling as brave as I did on that day, then you have to play Enlisted, a squad-based first-person shooter that combines PvP with PvE combat and is now available for free on PC and consoles. A massive metagame update just hit Enlisted, introducing research trees for weapons and vehicles, a matchmaking system based on equipment and many awesome gameplay improvements, all developed in collaboration with the Enlisted community. You'll take command of a squad of AI-controlled soldiers and combine their distinctive roles and abilities with yours. Construct fortifications as engineer, heal your man as a medic or carpet bomb your enemies as a radio operator, and devise strategies with your fellow squad leaders to lead your side to glorious victory in some of the most pivotal historical battles of World War II, as you clash against the squads of other players. And if you ever feel like the enemy has cooler guns, hey, you can join them and fight on the side of the United States, Germany, Japan or Soviet Union. What I really love about the game is just the sheer amount of different weapons tanks and aircraft available, and I really wish Weakman could borrow a German Tiger or any other weapon from the truly massive arsenal available to your soldiers in Enlisted. And the fact the game is heavily optimized means I can play it even on my laptop when I'm away from home. So no matter if you're new to the game or if you've played before, there's never been a better time to explore this new era of Enlisted and play it for free now on PC, PlayStation or Xbox by using my link in the pinned comment or description below. If you're a new player on PC, you'll also receive a special one-of-a-kind limited time only pack of goodies that includes includes multiple items, 4,000 silver to purchase weapons and recruit soldiers for your army and 3 days of premium account time, so grab it now before it's gone. Now let's return to the grim dark reality of Project Zomboid, where I lost my whole supply of ice cream. Well, that is a giant waste of calories. Sad. But the day was not a waste. I decided to do a quick sweep of the downstairs in the afternoon and grab some extra books that I didn't bring up on day one. And then I took out a zombie that was haunting the place. Lady, what did, wh what were you doing with a gun in your purse? Oh. Clearly this is America. My evening exercise brought weak men's fitness and strength levels to 4, while on his way to the strongest man alive. I was out of matches by day 20, and I decided to trek through the woods to a nearby bar. Looks like the owner is still around. I scoured the place and found two matches and a lighter, plus enough alcohol to make weak men's liver toxic even to zombies. There were a couple of crawlers outside who were nice enough to supply me with a shotgun and another pistol, this time actually with some ammo. Shit, let's go, let's go. They heard me breaking into the car. I decorated my bedroom with torn posters I stole at the bar, and then I noticed that water was out, so, like your average Florida man, I had to wash myself in the toilet. When I woke up the next day, I used a pipe wrench to plumb the two sinks below my water barrels, giving me clean water. How does that happen, you ask? You see, the dirty water flows through rusty lead pipes, lined with asbestos, which enrich it with nutrients that turn any bald spot into a lush head of hair. Holy shit, how are you not bald anymore? <laughs> what the fuck happened there? I decided to play with fire on day 22. I chopped down a tree for firewood and set up a small campfire in the middle of the road. A couple of shouts later and the zombies were ready for barbecue like fat people on 4th of July. Oh, I love the smell of a burning zombie in the morning. I yelled some more and kited them around the parking lot, making sure not to burn down any buildings. After a couple of hours, they were rendered into ash and my kill count had doubled. I went back outside to explore on day 23. So sneaky. <laughs> so sneaky. I gathered plenty of condiments and stale food from the two diners nearby. Then I chopped down a couple of trees so I could build a water collector barrel on top of my kitchen sink. Just in time as it just started to rain. Love it. Now, I plumbed the sink on day 24 and then spent the rest of the morning reading while it rained outside. When the rain stopped, I grabbed a gas can and went around checking cars for gasoline. Ooh, we can siphon gasoline from this car. Let's freaking go. Unfortunately, only two of them had some remaining, and even those very little, but it was enough to fuel a small jeep that I found the keys for. Let's freaking go, we got ourselves a car, yo! After my morning exercise on day 25, I built two more rain collector barrels next to my potato farm, and then noticed I could actually harvest them already. Oh, wait a bit. 
I want them to be seed bearing potatoes so I can replant them. In the evening, I went to explore some more and I found a beautiful gift in a store next to the gas station. Great improvised flamethrower. Oh, let's fucking go. I also grabbed a machete and promised to return in daylight. I kept my promise and returned the next morning. That motherfucker scared me. This was clearly a gun store and I wanted to plunder its secrets, but I needed a key. I once again used my master baiting skills to bring in one zombie at a time in hopes of looting a key. It took me a whole morning and like 20 zombie kills before I finally got lucky. And the rewards were worth it. I grabbed a shotgun and more than 20 boxes of shells and turned into a proper Rambo. My dude is getting ready to rock and roll. I then brought multiple large metal shells upstairs on day 27 and filled them with my new weapon arsenal, turning the kitchen into a proper war room. So come in a military installation here now. Then I grabbed a book about aiming and went to read about the ways of the ancient Chinese martial arts technique, the gun. I finished my studies in the morning and then suited up. I went to the nearby store and started blasting. Oh hell yeah, oh that's huge XP. I blasted away like a true American cowboy high on cocaine and crippling personal debt. When I reached level 2, I snuck back home to safety, ready to read the next book. I studied and farmed on day 29. I gathered 30 fresh potatoes and then replanted the seeds, securing my future food supply. With the book finished on day 30, I returned to the scene of the crime, where many more zombies remained. Stop the horde now, let's go level 3 aiming. I danced around them slippery like a fish in the water or an overpriced stripper on a bachelor party. I took them all down, reaching level 4 aiming and crossed 200 kills. Then I looted the bodies and left for a well-deserved nap. I filled two dirt bags in the morning so I could enlarge my rooftop farm with a patch of cabbage from the seeds I looted off of one of the bodies. I then decided to try and level up my reloading skill by endlessly reloading a shotgun, which was so entertaining it almost made me want to put a bullet through my own brain. So I made my way back to the gun store in search of an assault rifle with a bigger magazine. Holy shit, that's a freaking grenade launcher on it, I didn't even notice. I spent the morning of day 32 trying to get the reloading skill to level 2 by repeatedly jerking off into one of the magazines, which was surprisingly effective. That gave me access to a level 2 book which should have made the whole process smoother, but I wasn't yet ready to learn. Instead, I went back to the murder scene. Alright, we have a couple- oh my god, there's so many good police vehicles over here. Holy shit. My goal was the VHS store, which proved tougher to maneuver than I imagined. Fuck me. This is getting dangerous. But in the end, the risk was very much worth it, and I made it back home with a nice supply of tapes. I exercised and studied in the morning, then I grabbed an empty gas can and made my way to the police station, where I previously spotted all those neat police cars. I had to fight off a couple of zombies before searching the vehicles. Only one of them had some gasoline left, which I borrowed. You don't like the fact that I'm stealing your gas now, do you, huh? I then refueled one of the cars that still had a key inside and brought it back home. All the blood on his clothes was making weak men stressed, but I refused to wash due to a general lack of water, especially since every fight made him bloody again. Oh shit, I should have probably checked this before going for a ride. I dispatched the visitors then went for a ride through the neighborhood. This is where we need to go next because I want to get in here. This is the storage area. That storage area might have some good stuff for me. Specifically, some good stuff called a generator. But clearly, the area was too crowded for a loot run, so I had to return back home. I washed myself at the nearby diner, then snuck upstairs past zombies, making sure not to get bloody again. I decided to set up a closet with some reserved clothes on day 35, so I could freely swap between bloody and clean ones without having to waste too much water. Zombies were as persistent with their visits as the Americans were with eradicating the natives, but in my case, I eradicated them. I grabbed some extra clothes from the gun store and my new outfit looked pretty sweet. Now we're looking nice and cool. But I had no plans to wear it the next day because it was time for a fireball. Oh fuck, oh you bastards. I drove my police truck close to the storage area, threw the Molotov and missed. 
I got into the car only just and didn't even notice I got lacerated in the process. I turned on the siren, parked the car and watched as the fireball slowly grew in size. Slowly but surely they, they come. I finished reading the level 3 carpentry book while waiting for zombies to burn and in fact more than 200 of them perished in the fire. At 5pm the last one finally turned to ash. Fucking finally. I drove my jeep to the storage units on day 37 and indeed it seemed like my fire trick worked as there were only a couple of zombies around. All I need from you is a bloody key, alright? I found two generators inside and took one of them home. Alas, my neighborhood was once again infested with zeds, so before I could set up the generator, I had to deal with the pest the American way, with a shotgun. I started blasting and blasting and more and more showed up. Holy shit, there's so many. But weak man was not so weak anymore and he lay down the law with his gun, turning the gas station blood red. Alright, I think that's it, that was, uh, <laughs> that was worth it. I set up the generator at the gas station on the morning of day 38 and finally I got power. I refueled my car and filled all the gas cans I could carry. I felt great, things were finally working out but as always, our confidence is a slow and insidious killer. Grab all these gas cans. Motherfucker. What? Where the fuck did you come from? Ah oh, shit. But that didn't stop me from driving back to the storage lot and picking up the second generator. I placed it on the roof and finally, the power was back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got light once again. Oh, let's go. I could once again rejoice in simple things like cooking my food and not stubbing my toes in the dark. I decided to take it easy on day 39. I moved one of the freezers outside to fill it up with potatoes when I could harvest them. Then I went to watch the VHS tapes I brought home a couple of days ago. I learned the ways of the mechanic in the morning and then improved my carpentry skill in the evening. Both of my wounds were finally healed as well and it seemed like the weak man would live to fight another day. I noticed my generator was using a lot of power from the many lights that were on downstairs, so I decided to deal with that. There's bound to be some zombies in here, yeah, there's a crawler there, oh, there you go. These guys are all here for the generator. But first, I had to deal with the invasive pests. I received some good news in the evening. Oh, okay, okay, so we're getting rain soon-ish. Let's go. Then, spend the rest of the day exercising and reading books. But there's never enough books, so I decided to visit the local bookstore on day 41. That ball is too big for my liking, we're gonna have to deal with it the other way. I didn't have my shotgun with me, so I broke into the police station in hopes of borrowing one. But all I could find was one lady in a holding cell, whose night of drinking took a turn for the worst. I drove back home to gear up, then it was time for a party. This might, uh, this might be dangerous, but screw it. I spent the evening grabbing every single book I could carry, and while you might say that some of these books are overpowered, you know what? I don't give a shit. It's fun. Oh fuck, I need to go, I need to go. Come on, get in the car, get in the car. My potatoes finally blossomed on day 42, and I harvested over 40 fresh ones, then replanted the seeds. I spent the rest of the day studying how to aim my shotgun better and working out. And that was also pretty much all I did throughout the day 43, before I finally managed to finish the book on the morning of day 44. Then I decided to take a trip to the nearby trailer park in hopes of finding more food I could combine with my potatoes and also a can opener. But when I got outside a big surprise awaited me. 40 degrees? What the hell just happened here? Holy shit. I took my shirt off, daring the zombies to scratch weak man's manly chest. I got lucky with a barricaded trailer that was full of food and more. Oh, let's go! Finally a can opener. I returned to the trailer park the next day in search of more cooking utensils. But since rednecks aren't exactly known for their fine dining habits, I didn't find what I was looking for. I did find something else though. Oh shit, okay. That's far from perfect. I fought my way back to the car and drove home, finding another gift on the road. Oh look, there's a sledge in the ground here. I'll grab that one. During my routine exercise on day 46, I reached level 5 in strength and fitness, which removed weak men's feeble and unfit traits. 
I also noticed one of my cabbage patches had a disease, so I had to harvest it early, saving some fresh produce. At this point, I had read many a book, but I didn't really put my skills to the test. If I ever wanted to turn weak man into a strong man, I had to cocoon him into an ugly, filthy, sweat-filled embrace, so he could eventually emerge as a beautiful, beautiful butterfly like that ugly motherfucker in Alien 4. So, on day 47, I dismantled a lot of digital watches and walkie-talkies in hopes of getting my electrical to level 1. And that got me not even half a level, right? a lot of garbage. And speaking of getting stronger, I decided to take my shotgun for a spin again on day 48. There's nothing like the smell of fresh zombie blood in the morning, especially if you're standing far away from the blast radius. But there was one small thing I forgot to take into the account. Holy shit, the radio wasn't joking, that is thick fog. The thick fog was hiding a proper horde, and no matter how many I killed and how much I tried to outmaneuver them, they kept on coming. Oh my god, there is a lot more than I thought there's gonna be. After another loop through the trees, I managed to lose them so I could sneak back to the car. I thought about coming back in the afternoon, but you know what? Fuck that. It was safer to just chop down a couple of trees at home. Trees I could turn into planks on day 49, and planks that I could turn into walls, doors, and barricades. Alright, so whenever I rappel down, this is now gonna be a bit safer. On day 50, I grabbed my sledge and brought down the strong concrete walls like the Germans did in 89, then rebuild them out of crappy planks, like weak men did in 93. Really shows that everybody wants to party when there's shit to fuck up, but nobody wants to sign up when said shit needs rebuilding. I might just fill this with cars and work on them. And indeed, filling my garage with vehicles was my plan on day 51. You yeah, have key for any of these. Not for this one. Not for that one. I ran around with a gas can, trying to find cars with keys in the ignition. Turns out, a surprisingly big amount of them still had them, so I was able to fill up my garage while taking down any zombies who might have had something to say about my committing Grand Theft Auto. I began the next morning by harvesting cabbages, and I got a nice mule out of it. I then destroyed a wall on the balcony so I could build a ladder up to it, but for some reason, weak man forgot how ladders work. Can you, can you climb down? You also cannot climb down. This is bullshit. I had to break down another wall and finally I had a secondary entrance. I then chopped down some more trees in the evening so I could entomb my garage with sturdy wooden walls like the ancient pharaohs until the place was fully secured. In the afternoon I harvested and replanted some more potatoes which brought my farming skill to level 2 and then I added a compost there where I could chuck rotten food into in the future. I decided to return to the storage lots on day 54 to see if I missed some useful loot. Does that guy have a tinfoil hat in him? Oh dude. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. But the previous night exercise left me sore and barely able to swing my weapon, which is what basically happens to me every night in real life. Just, just get somebody, just get one of them. What the fuck is this? I hooked up a big trailer, then I had to hightail it back home, before the exhaustion could catch up to me. I exercised and studied the second mechanical book on day 55. I'm doing squats here, looking like a teletubby mother trucker which allowed me to finally begin my work on day 56. And when I say my work, I mean endlessly installing and uninstalling pieces of two vehicles in the garage until they both look like something I could actually afford to drive on my YouTube paycheck. Hell yeah, look at that, level 3 mechanics. Completely broke this poor car, but that's fine. I continued destroying everything that was worth something on the cars parked in my garage, which was slowly turning to a graveyard of used vehicles. And the poor weak man was starting to feel the toils of endless mechanical work. Alright, he's done, and now apparently he's ridiculously tired, peckish, extremely bored, depressed, agitated, and... Hurt. And the endless mechanical work was also making me tired, bored, and depressed in real life. I was craving some real action, so I channeled weak man's true American spirit and went to relax with a shotgun. I followed the highway to the other side of Moldra where I knew a mechanic shop might have some good loot, but the fight soon started turning for the worst. Yeah, this seems slightly not very good. More and more zombies showed up and the fact that weak man was getting tired like a weak little turd he was, was not helping. Whew. That's fucking close. 
I managed to escape, but I promised to return. With a Molotov. The fact that I was setting half of the town on fire in the middle of the night didn't do much to improve weak men's chance of surviving this challenge. I reached level 6 in aiming and over 300 zombies growled their last growl in this night before I was done. <laughs> Look at this train! What the fuck is going on here? Yeah, come on, follow me boys. I quickly looted the mechanic shop where I found an oil filter and a welding mask, so the slaughter was totally worth it. I went to the gun store on day 59 to do some shopping in the small arms section. Where the fuck did you come from? I used the oil filter I found the previous night to build a silencer for a 9mm pistol I borrowed from the store and then decided to test it in the evening. Alright, let's see this. Oh, that is lovely. I got a shave and a haircut on day 60 and looking hella fresh I went back to work in my garage. I ripped apart a couple more cars and eventually reached level 4 in mechanics. I would call the day a success but then I heard a mysterious message on the radio. Ooh, somebody is talking on the radio. It's been 50 days since the last helicopter but it sounded like the birds were active once again out there. Helicopter outside? Oh. That is loud! But that didn't stop me from driving down the back roads in search of more cooking utensils until I finally found what I was looking for this whole time. Hey, finally, empty cooking pot, let's grab this. On my triumphant return home, I found my new walls assaulted by a small army of Zeds, so I had to explain to them how to behave properly. I made a new friend on day 62. There you go, David, you belong here to take care of my... Props. Then I began reading a new chapter of the aiming book. When I got bored of that, I grabbed the empty gas cans and drove to the gas station to refill them. I woke up on day 63 to the sound of zombies having a party downstairs. Where, oh. Okay, we got multiple in here, huh? Clearly, the helicopter brought new Zeds from the surrounding woods and buildings, so I decided to spend the day doing some casual ethnical cleansing on the highway. I don't know if it's PC to call zombies an ethnical group, so let's just call it murder. And thusly, I murdered multiple small groups until I found the ultimate prize. Oh, there's the rabbit, I see it. That one's mine. I drove to the police station on day 64, in hopes of finding some more ammo that I might have missed on my previous visit, but I haven't found more than a couple of walking corpses. Then I went to the nearby warehouses I've not searched before, where I found a large selection of new seeds from my farms before I was rudely interrupted. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Come on. You gotta be kidding me with this shit. With the immediate area now secured, I turned back to studying on day 65. I farmed and studied, exercised, studied and exercised and studied some more. Then I studied, farmed and studied and exercised and studied even more to the point I was going insane in real life. Insane enough to work and edit 16 hours a day this last week, which caused some really funky zombie filled nightmares at 4 in the morning. But everything for my beautiful subscribers. And if you're not subscribed yet, well what the fuck are you waiting for? Ho ho ho, this is a beautiful baby. It was day 69 and I wanted to go explore a bit. I had a silenced rifle and I was ready to blast. Okay, let's give this a try. Oh, that sounds good. But after a couple of salvos, the unthinkable happened. Let's use that. There we go. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, that's bad. Luckily, I still had my pistol, so I used that to clear the area. Then, I looted the medical and grocery stores nearby. Since weak man was already tired, I decided to go home, but on my way back, I spotted a spiff of zombie whose outfit I just had to grab. The next day, it was time for another adventure. I drove all the way to the other side of the town, where I knew I could get my hands on a proper water barrel. But of course, it was well protected. Not well enough for a gun-wielding maniac though, which now that I think about it, was pretty much every resident of Kentucky back in 93 and probably even today. Motherfucker. I think I notice here. I gathered some fresh produce at the farm as well, then brought the barrel back home and installed it on the roof. On day 71, I took a walk up the street to a local grocery store I've not visited before, but just like on that rifle, it happened here as well. Ooh, 
a silencer just broke. At least the store was so full of food that I had to break into one of the cars in the parking lot and use it to haul all the good stuff back home. With my own food supply and the amount I got from that store, I was now confident I could survive well into the winter, as long as weak man didn't get his brains eaten by a horde. So to prevent that, I decided it was time I tried to fortify my home once again. Now you see, I'm a big fan of cheese, especially smoked ones or a nice melty buffalo on my salad. Anyway, I employed cheese in defense of my base and not by making weak men lactose intolerant, no, by building my walls by using a fence wall fence method. I've never tried it before, but on paper, it should confuse zombies to the point they'd not be able to break it, but clearly, it confused weak men as well. Aw, oh, come on. You scratch yourself, you dildo. I tore down the old walls on day 73 and replaced them with shabby new fence and crates. Unfortunately, my carpentry skill was progressing very slowly, which was clear from weak man's sloppy work. When taking a break in the afternoon, this happened. Severe weather warning, thunderstorm imminent in five days. Okay, interesting, interesting. I wanted to bring a washing machine upstairs on day 74, but I realized I needed electrical level three skill to move it, which to be honest, is bullshit because all you need to do with that one is stick a tube into the right hole and trust me I'm very good at sticking tubes into the right holes so instead I installed a sink and then went back to fixing my base working in the night and in the rain we're making this poor weak man a slave I chopped down some more trees in the morning of day 75 and then made a neat little row of planks which I turned into an even neater wall of boxes in the evening oh for fuck's sake Right arm? <laughs> Come on. To prevent any further injuries from jumping over fences, I decided to build an alternative entrance. Motherfucker. What? What? What's going on over here? Oh, you were stuck in a floor. Clearly, my new fence had a fatal flaw. The crawlers could still damage it. But all I could do for now was to repair the damage, then I secured my new ladder. On day 77, I decided to go on a loot run before the thunderstorm hit. I wanted to find more waterproof and insulated clothing in preparation for colder months. Okay, there's a couple in here. Oh, there's a bunch of crawlers and shit as well. I cleared the gun store and loaded up on clothing. Then I drove further into the town where I looted two more clothing stores before returning home for the night. The storm began on day 78 and I spent the morning harvesting and replanting potatoes, which brought my farming skill to level 3. In the afternoon, I installed a couple more metal shelves in the kitchen, then spent the evening studying. I continued that routine on day 79 when the radio chimed in. Loot runner heading out. Interesting. And while it happened too quick to spot it, that message meant that a helicopter flew over my base, which also repeated the next day. But that didn't stop me from going back to work on day 80. I chopped down a bunch of trees, then proceeded to build a box fence around my side windows. And it might have taken a whole day, but finally this is the last fence I need to build. Let's go. I assumed there would be zombies closing in on my base after two heli flybys over the last couple of days. And I was correct. I cleared out the gas station and gun store, where I also borrowed a couple of extra storage boxes to install in my kitchen. When I returned home, there was a zombie outside my fence walls and I decided to test his ability to cross it. It worked like a charm. The fool was stuck, but then maybe I was the fool. Oh come on, I scratched myself doing this? Oh, it's such bullshit. Nursing a bandage arm, I decided to take it easy on day 82. First, I installed a new table in the kitchen. And this is where weak man can pretend that he knows how to read maps. Then I grabbed a couple more lockers that I could fill with warm clothes for the coming winter. Then my foolish actions from the day before came to haunt me. Oh great. Oh, that's not good. Our left form is slightly infected. Since I already looted the only real medical store in Muldra, I decided to try my luck finding antibiotics in the nearby housing area. According to the news, like 90% of Americans are addicted to some kind of drugs and I'm sure the news guys would never lie to me. So I had high hopes of finding at least some homemade meth, if not the drugs I needed. But after searching many houses, I managed to loot not even a sniff of white powder. On my way home though, I took off the bandage and voila. Let's, uh, let's remove the bandage. See how this is. Hey, it's fine. Didn't even need to search for antibiotics, very nice. 
I cleared out some zeds around my base on day 84, then I boiled a pot of water to disinfect the batch of bandages for future use. In the evening, I noticed my generator shut off, and when I checked it, I realized its condition was all the way down to 35%. Good thing it didn't catch on fire. Luckily, I had a stash of scrap electronics ready to repair it. Hey, it's back at 100%, let's go. With a thunderstorm brewing outside, I decided to begin learning about tailoring on day 85. If I were to realize my second goal, and go for the military base, I thought it would be a smart idea to pad my clothing with some extra layers of protection. So, I spent the whole day reading until I finished the book late at night. I scavenged all the bodies that were happily rotting away around my base and ripped their clothes to useful shreds. I got a lot of stuff, but very little thread, unfortunately. I used the materials to train tailoring, but I only had enough thread to get half a level. So, I went to the gun store in the evening and tore up all the the clothing that remained there, which was unfortunately not a lot. Radio told me the rain was gonna stop on day 87, so I quickly created a new patch on my farm where I planted strawberries. Then I drove up the highway to the clothing stores I visited previously and I tore apart all the clothing and zombies I could find there. That gave me plenty of materials to train on day 88, and while I had enough threat to reach level 1 in tailoring, it was enough for much more. Okay. Level one and a third, that's better than nothing. Then I spent the rest of the day exercising, reading and harvesting my first batch of carrots in the evening. I drove south to the crossroads in the morning where I cleared out a couple of zombies who were hanging around, then wove my way through the wrecks like a proper post-apocalyptic Tom Hardy. My goal was to check out the entrance to the military base, but first I stopped at the nearby warehouses, which was a stupid idea because weak man was already tired and there were plenty of zeds. Probably not one of my smarter moves out here, but I managed to fight my way through to a big box truck, which, like a kid in an erotic shop when he sees his first dildo, I decided I wanted it. But first, I drove past the warehouses to find the military base. That's only the entrance, huh? We're gonna have quite a lot of work to do. I returned to the box truck the next day to fuel it up, but weak men got tired just driving there, so I knew I had to set up a camp if I were to assault the military. Driving back and forth took just way too long. I parked next to one of the warehouses where I got myself in a bit of a pickle, but eventually managed to clear the mess. I then snuck back to my car and drove home to grab what I needed. I returned to the warehouse on day 91. Looks like this place has been abandoned for a while, we'll take this mattress, we use this for sleeping. I placed the makeshift bed on a raised platform, then placed some sheet ropes and destroyed the staircase. I returned home one last time to get the essentials I would need to survive away from my base for a while. Alright, we got ammo, we got stuff to make molotovs, we got food. What the fuck else do I need? I drove through the night and dosed poor weak man with sleeping pills to get him to sleep because the platform counted as outdoors, which he was of course deathly afraid of. Day 92 was the go day. I drove to the entrance of the military base, took out my pistol and started blasting. Just need to keep doing point blanks and we're good. And we're gonna be good. I had a Molotov with me just in case I needed it, but in the end there were only around 70 zombies in the area and those were easy to clear out without fire. Weak man was ridiculously tired at this point, so I drove back to the warehouses, but on the way back this happened. Oh fuck off, don't run out of gas right now. I snuck back to the car at midnight, taking out any zombies in my way so I could refuel it and bring it back home. Next day I took out a shotgun and drove to the base proper. After a couple of shots, zombies started to swarm, so it was time for fire. Okay, that's better. We got multiple on fire now. Now you might call me a pyromaniac, but to be honest, it was now October, more than three months after the apocalypse began. It was getting colder and who did these zombies have to keep them warm in the winter? Nobody. So I stepped up. Don't worry about the forest fires, it's fine. The way I look at it, I was the good guy here, bringing warmth to those in need. And I spread that warmth all the way into the base, but once again weak man became so tired he could barely walk so I had to leave. I was back on day 94 to wrangle whatever remained. A couple of blasts from my shoddy brought them out of the trees and the ones still on fire quickly mingled with the rest to have a nice group barbecue going. Alright, this is clearing out a bit. I like it. With the outside clear, I made my move to get to the one still hiding inside the base. I used the entrance to funnel them. We stopped the horde now. 
and slowly but surely Weakman was victorious and more than 500 zombies were dead. Alas, he was too tired to begin looting and there were definitely still zombies lurking around, so I drove back home to get some rest. On day 95, Weakman was rudely awoken by a helicopter hovering above. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me, there's a helicopter? right here right now but it only dropped some garbage then flew away i took the box truck to the military base where roughly another hundred or so zombies came out of the hiding so we had a nice dance to the tune of my shotgun i then added some sheet ropes to the main compound building and had a nap in the evening i began exploring the storage area where i found all kinds of good stuff shotgun suppressor oh ho 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 now we talking i went to check another of the storage lots on day 96 all right, let's go down, let's go down, fuck. All right, that wasn't the best. The place was two whole floors filled to the brim with all kinds of amazing loot. No way I could bring that all back. So I decided to take a trip back home and I borrowed a Humvee to do it. I was out of food and weak men missed his home. So I filled the Humvee with as much ammo as possible and drove to Muldra. And here comes the welcome party. After clearing out the Zeds around the base, nice shower and a good night of sleep, it was time to return. I spent the rest of the day loading up the box truck with only the most useful of guns, ammo and attachments, leaving the rest behind for another time. The next few days were just loot, loot, loot. I cleared the first storehouse of essentials on day 98, and then I moved the truck to the second one in the evening. Whew. A good shot. It took me the whole of day 99, but I managed to completely fill the box truck to the brim. There was probably enough loot there for another 5 trucks, but I was already greedy enough. Motherfucker! Motherfucker! Fucking hell! Where the fuck did you come from? And so I entered the foggy day 100 with a lacerated arm, but I wasn't yet ready to leave, so I broke into another warehouse. That is the one that I was looking for. You see, if weak man was to survive past day 100, he would need to somehow stay warm because Sean Bean came around the other day and told me that the winter was coming. Once the antique oven was loaded in, I was finally ready to go home. Come on, come on, just keep going. A couple of zombies awaited me outside the base as a welcome home party, which brought Weakman's total kill count over 2500 in 100 days. He drank deep from a bottle of bourbon as a celebration, knowing that he has learned so much over the last couple of months, but there was still so much to do if he was ever to become a real strongman. But that would not be easy, because the weather just got much worse. The loot became scarcer, the zombie hordes tripled in numbers and there was about a million helicopters flying above. So the next challenge was surviving the brutal cryogenic winter and my goal was to raid the secret research facility in March Ridge and maybe, just maybe, find a cure. At the dawn of day 101, it became instantly clear that Sean Bean was right. The winter has arrived and all the Starks have transformed into zombies. There was nobody to mend the wall and weak man certainly had his issues. Minus 15 degrees in October, huh? Looks like uh, weak man's gonna be developing some serious case of frozen balls this winter. So I brought in the antique oven I stole from the military and installed it in my kitchen. Then I replanted my farm with tomatoes, cabbages and potatoes because everyone knows crops fertilized with zombie blood grow beautifully at minus 20 degrees. The next morning, surprise surprise, it was still fucking cold. So I decided to test the new oven. You know civilization is ending when we are starting to burn books. It was nice and cozy when stood next to the thing, but cross a room and it felt like Antarctica once again. But for now I decided to learn metalworking in hopes of one day building propane fueled ovens that could heat the whole place. Alas at the moment, heating the kitchen would have to do, so I chopped down a couple of trees and built not so sturdy walls to keep the place isolated. But of course, my carpentry work was sloppy, so I decided to go search for plaster on day 103. I drove to the storage lot, disposed of the natives and then went to search the place. I soon found a couple of bags, but then I realized my mistake. High level wooden walls, Oh shit. We're not gonna be able to use that yet. Of course, high level wooden walls meant carpentry level 7, and I was only at level 5. I still had one VHS tape at home that gave me a little bit of push, but to get to the next level I needed to train and that's what I set out to do on day 104, encouraged by a beautiful morning message. If you can hear this, get fucked. <laughs> 
<laughs> I drove to the white trash county and began hitting their beds and closets with my hammer, thusly soaking up all the knowledge that went into construction of said furniture. Of course, the residents were too stoned to stop me from stealing their beds and crushing their kitchens, and finally, I reached level 6 in carpentry. I then spent the evening reading the next carpentry book and fruitlessly shaking my fist at helicopters flying above. I spent the whole of day 105 reading, exercising and reading some more, until I was rudely interrupted by a helicopter dropping his juicy load right on top of me in the middle of the night. I finished the carpentry 4 book in the morning, then I took a peek outside. Clearly, the heli attracted zeds like weak men's stinky balls attract flies, so I had to fight my way to the airdrop which was full of presents. Sugar and vinegar, box of jars, well now I'll be able to pickle some stuff. I then cleared out the remaining zombies around my base and loaded up the truck with as many supply boxes as it could carry. I put my new gift to work the next morning and I pickled 9 jars of cabbages for the long winter. Then I made my way back to the drop where I got a beautiful present full of toilet paper. If 2020 taught us anything, it taught us that the first thing that goes in pandemic is toilet paper. So lucky me. I also unboxed a lot of seeds and then spent the rest of the evening watering my freezing crops. On day 108, I woke up to banging downstairs, which is something that often happens in real life as well, and I realized that someone broke my back door, which is also something that often happens to your mom. I then took my truck deeper into the city to scavenge for garbage bags for more rain barrels, but with the increased zombie numbers, that proved a risky endeavor. On my return, I was greeted by some more banging. What are you doing here, lady? Fuck, get off of me, you dildo! It turned out my back door was infested by walkers, and as the day turned into night, they deployed the crawlers. Oh, you guys have broken through, haven't you? I cleared out an infestation, built my new rain collector, and then pickled some fresh broccoli just to ruin the already shitty day some more. Adamant to make day 109 a less shitty day, I planted potatoes in the fresh winter soil. Then I went to chop 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 the trees around my home for materials and to prevent the undead bastards to ambush me with my pants down. I put the planks I got to good use in the evening and tidied up the hallway. The next day I chose violence against the establishment, and because nothing was established anymore, I vented my rage on diner interior design. If weak man dies, no one gets to enjoy pizza anymore. Alas, all my hard work resulted only a quarter level of XP needed to get to level 7 in carpentry. I decided to drive deeper into town on day 111 to find more wooden paraphernalia to dismantle, which was a stupid idea because Muldra was more and more infested with every passing day. Oh shit, there's more than I thought it's gonna be. Low ammo count and fog made me turn back home, but I promised to return. And in return, I did, with a shotgun. I spent the rest of the day explaining to the Walking Dead just exactly why they should have committed Sudoku to the brain instead of forcing me to ruin the beautiful pristine white landscape with abstract paintings made with their rotten guts. The next day, I returned to the scene of the crime where only a few stragglers remained. I took my saw and hammer to the vid store shelves and they absolutely melted under the might of weak men's carpentry skills, which were still not level 7. I also found a fire extinguisher with an option to use it as a weapon and I had to try it out. Let's see what this is gonna do. I guess absolutely nothing. And that exercise proved exactly what my viewers long suspected about my IQ levels. When I returned the next day, I learned there were still some stiffs guarding the police station, but they couldn't stop me from breaking it apart. In the afternoon, I decided to clear out the ruined fence back at home and finally build something proper. Alright, let's build a proper wooden door, finally. As a reward, weak men woke up with a nasty cold the next morning, so I decided to turn on the heat and stay inside until it passed. Lots of sleep, a roaring fire and a good book made the sneezing and coughing surprisingly disappear by the evening, which makes weak men a tougher mother trucker than most of you watching this video. I decided to stay at home for another day and continued with repairs, and as is tradition, weak men tripped, fell and scratched his arm. But that was not all, my day was also rudely interrupted by another heli. Okay, they are all following the sound of the helicopter down there. Once again, I had to defend my home like an oil rich nation against the USA, and just as I almost won another helicopter showed up, probably sponsored by EA because it blessed me with yet another loot box. Oh yeah, 
I thought uh, everybody and their mother heard this. On day 116, I finished the second front door and just like that, I finally had a proper garage. I also decided to fix the back door entrance just in case if some crawlers decided to slither back in just like the slimy little dildos they were. It felt like Siberia has arrived to Kentucky the next morning, but that couldn't stop me. I was determined to reach level 7 carpentry, which almost got me killed. Like a proper Balkan man when faced with adversity, I went to a bar instead. And like a proper Balkan man in a bar, I absolutely trash the place just to finally get what I wanted. Hey, finally, carpentry level 7 unlocked. With walls fully upgraded at last, I was ready to apply plaster. But I forgot I needed a bucket and finding one took me the whole morning because the little shit was hiding in the last freaking container that I searched. I then mixed the plaster and Wickman magic the walls to look pristine and smooth like the bowls of that chick you ordered from Thailand. I then spent most of the day 119 reading the next nimble book, warm and cozy next to my fireplace. Alas, duty called, and I grabbed propane torches and a big tank and drove to the gas station to have them refilled. Oh yeah, filling up this bad boy is gonna hurt. At last, I was ready to level up my metalworking skill, which I needed to build a propane-fueled furnace, and with a storm on the horizon, I had no time to lose. I drove south to the car wreck-filled intersection and went to work. Each wreck consumed a full propane torch, so I had to jump back into my car after each two I dismantled for a refill from the big tank. In total, I had to take apart more than 20 cars which took me most of the day before I finally reached level 2 in metalworking. As a reward, I decided to bring back home a cool sports car which I had to fight for due to weak man's shitty driving skills. Oh, that's a fast car, you love to see it. Next day was a reading day and I started right after my morning exercise. I spent the whole day learning metalworking too and I just managed to finish the book late in the evening. I drove straight to the intersection the next morning and went back to work. I dismantled every single burned down wreck, which was enough to bring me to level 3 metalworking. But of course, I wanted more, so I stopped at the diner on my way back and dismantled the already trash place. Alas, the XP I got from that was barely peanuts. I've got an idea to level up a bit by repairing my half way decent cars the next day. I could also beef them up with additional armor, but I did not have the necessary book for that. So I drove back to the intersection and filled my trailer with metal sheets, which was all that remained from the racks. Let's do some on C2 repairs over here. I continued with repairs after I got back home, fixing the big truck and my Humvee as well. I then went to the bookstore on day 124, in hopes of finding that missing magazine. Being able to armor my cars would be a huge boon, but while I did find some useful books there, I found no trace of the magazine I was after. The day was not a complete waste though, as the zombies prowling around the library brought weak men's kill count to 3000. I had a vague notion there were more car wrecks on the other side of Moldra, so on day 125 I took a ride down the heavily infested streets. I stubbornly fought for every burned out shell of a car I could dismantle. And even though Zeds tried their best to make my day a pain, I was stubborn like that ex of yours who took a shit on the floor right next to the toilet just because you left the seat up again. Oh, let's go. I finally found it. I spent the rest of the day there and even though weak man was almost dead tired, I dismantled every single wreck and the last one finally brought me to level 4 metalworking. I gathered all the resources the next day and finally began assembling the propane furnace. Whoa, what are these noises this thing is making? Holy shit, that sounds like my ass. It turned out I had no idea how to actually use the thing. I couldn't turn it on, I couldn't refill it from a propane tank, I couldn't even do it at a gas station and after being confused for a while I turned to Google. Well, Reddit told me that this is just for crafting purposes and not for actual heating, so all this time Wasted. Yes, I never actually checked what the damn thing was used for and like a silly billy, I got excited when I saw it in the crafting menu. But if you thought that was the extent of my stupidity, think again. Day 127 was very foggy so I decided to stay indoors and do some exercise and reading. But then I realized all those jars of pickled veggies were beginning to rot because I forgot to cook them. That is a stupidity like I've never seen before. Luckily, some survived, but I lost a lot of my winter food supply there. I still wanted to find that car magazine, and I knew it could spawn on a metal worker, mechanic, and other blue car zombies. Alas, I wasn't sure where to find a high concentration of sad zombies, so I decided to visit McCoy's. I was chased by a friendly heli all the way there, and when I arrived, the actual worker zeds were very rare, which tells you a lot about the state of today's society, where everyone wants to be an influencer or suck dicks for money 
money on OnlyFans, and no one wants to do the real hard work anymore. Building a better tomorrow with their bare hands, and being forcefully retired at the age of 43 because of continuous back pain, hearing loss, and other work-related injuries, so they can live the rest of their short, miserable life high on prescription drugs. But not only did the trip to McCoy's bring me new revelations, I also found an annotated map, and I drove to the Mark house the next day. I used a silent shotgun. Dude, the sound of this is so cool. And I discreetly dispatched the zombies from the area. Unfortunately, the house only had one box of shotgun shells, which was less than what I used to clear the area. Then, in the evening, I walked to the police station where I hotwired a police truck, which was not a modded vehicle, and I realized I could actually armor it up. Oh yes, look at this. This is gonna be awesome. I drove to the intersection where I grabbed a ton of metal bars and pipes, which I knew I needed to make my car so protected it could actually be used in a Durex commercial. But before I could begin working on the car, I needed to read the next metal working book. If I had a mechanics one, I'd read that too, alas. Then my study was rudely interrupted in the afternoon by a helicopter once again. Those metal birds were even more persistent than my viewers asking when's the next Kenshi video. On day 132, I finally got weak men's fitness level to 6 and then I continued to read into the afternoon to finish the book. The weather outside wasn't the best. It is very fucking foggy out here, but I see some zombies down there. But that didn't stop me. Luckily, one of my mechanic's training cars was still working, so I drove that one outside and fit my new car back in, because I wanted to work on it in a safe enclosed area. I banged and welded, and slowly it turned into something straight out of Mad Max, if weak man was a chrome-huffing, wild-eyed maniac. Instead, he drove slowly and carefully, like a little turd back to the intersection because he was missing the materials for one final addition. You know what? This car looks pretty fucking awesome now. With a proper armored car now, I was ready to follow my goal and go exploring towards March Ridge and the secret facility there. But first, I needed to fix my ever-present weight loss issue, and my solution was to go fishing. Of course, weak men knew nothing about fishing, but that didn't stop me. I made my way to a secluded pond nearby, cleared out the area and began building a fishing shack. Oh. The water is gone. <laughs> that it's not what I wanted to do. Clearly, my plans needed adapting, so I returned the next day with a sledgehammer. Oh, this is turned into water. Oh, but I can walk on it. Oh, for fuck's sake. And then I changed my plans once again and built the fence box fence in hopes it would protect me from the passing zeds. I then returned back home to read the fishing book which I finished deep in the night. All I needed now was a fishing rod and I learned how to make one by watching a VHS tape. I also found a couple of rods and fishing nets at the gun store and after a quick nap I was ready to go fishing. Oh, for fuck's sake, it's a helicopter again. So instead I did a perimeter check and some light reading until another EA loot box dropped right behind my house and a whole hell broke loose. I fought the invasive species well into the night until I was sure they were invasive no more. On day 137, I was finally ready to go fishing. I also brought a couple of traps with me but forgot to bring any bait. I set my fish nets and then began to fish. It took me the whole day and then it finally happened. Hey, let's go, we caught a small crappy. It's a crap one. So four days after deciding to start fishing, I had one whole tiny little shit of a fish. Great success, but at least the nets were full of little bait fishes so I grabbed those for future use. I cooked my first fish stir fry the next morning, then I drove back to the pond. I added some potatoes as bait to the traps, then I began fishing, which was naturally interrupted by yet another helicopter. I was beginning to think Weak Man was in some kind of reality TV show broadcasted for your amusement on YouTube, but that just sounds ridiculous. They was a good day. I caught a lot of shoes, but also we got this huge pike and a couple of smaller ones. The big pike was truly a monster, and my food supplies really began stocking up, especially when I harvested potatoes, cabbages, and tomatoes the next day. Enough food to feed an army, but Weak Man was alone. But you don't have to be, because you can play Project Zomboid with me and the rest of my community on my own PC server. Jump on my Discord to get the details on how you can join, links down below. On day 140, I was back at the pond, where a nice surprise awaited me. Oh, we got a full-on rabbit! Holy shit, let's go! With two rabbits and another pike that I caught, Weak Man was now ready to start blasting once again. And so I did the next day. I grabbed my shotgun and drove to the school, because I wanted to see if I could find some books. Zombies poured out of every hole like shit out of tourists eating Eastern European street food for the first time, without drinking at least half of a bottle of vodka. But contrary to his name, Weak Man was made of sturdier stuff, and while he was still full-on panicked, he cleared the streets and got what he wanted. Oh, let's fucking go, mechanic. 
Annex Volume 3, that's what we needed. I returned the next day to continue looting the nearby area, and because I'm a real Slavic man, I prioritized the liquor store first, before driving back home to do some chores around the house. On day 143, I drove back to the pond. Oh man, in another life, a weak man would be hitting on dummy thick furries right now, instead he's driving to this wilderness full of rotten dead and while i contemplated the cruel injustice of this furry less life weak men reached level two in fishing by catching you heard it right shoes and socks next i decided to begin scouting the nearby towns and shortly after i hit the road this happened holy shit that is what the fuck is this Whoa, 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 whoa. That was on the road to Rosewood, and a little further down the line, I also found a cool survivor zombie. The town itself was pretty heavily populated though, but I was sure a little bit of fire could make it a much cozier place. I bobbed and weaved my way through the heavily infested road back home, and then I turned south towards Marchridge on the next day. While that city was also full of zombies, at least the drive there wasn't as bad as the previous day, and I was confident I could make a dent through the tightly packed streets. Ooh, there's a fresh topfung over here. Let's not go there. On my way back, I stopped at the town entrance just to clear a few guardians there. Then I returned back home to scheme. And by scheme, I mean I read the trapping book the whole morning, before going back to the pond to fish in the evening and check on the, unfortunately, empty traps. I started the day 147 with rooftop farming, then continued by learning more about fishing and trapping via books, which turned into a nice, cozy evening until I got interrupted by a heli once again. The mixed Take him at night. Mostly. Of course, it attracted Zeds, but it was nothing a tired weak man couldn't handle. But something he couldn't handle was a road. Oh my god, how did I do that? <laughs> No! Luckily, there was another truck there that I could hotwire and use it to flip my car. Without any further issues, I made my way to March Ridge, and then I started blasting. Even though my shotgun was silenced, the zombies encircled me from all sides, and there were some sketchy moments, but once again, weak men prevailed. No, oh, check this survivor. Oh, look at this! That's a cloak. Although he was dead tired, I pushed to my target destination, a VHS store that was unfortunately empty. I woke up to the sound of another helicopter the next day, so I decided to stay at home to read and relax. But surprise surprise, another heli showed up in the afternoon, which meant I had to deal with a home invasion the next morning. My plan after that was to go check on my traps, but what followed was an intense shootout throughout the whole forest, which somehow got extremely infested in the couple of days I've not visited. Like Twitch streamers when they see an opportunity to say something misogynistic, they jumped on the opportunity to bite my ass. But my ass was not for biting, even though I had to deal with another big crowd when I returned back home for the night. I had a new sidearm ready to be tested the next morning. The sound of this is so fucking cool. Then I rebuilt what the Zeds have ruined the previous day. After that, I spent the day reading electrical book because I needed the skill at level 3 before I was confident in moving to March Ridge, because that was the requirement to reinstall electrical ovens. I went into the town to dismantle whatever I could find and what I mostly found was a ton of zombies all over the place. No wonder every time there's a helicopter Copter, I get a bunch of these bastards back at my home. While the zombies provided me with digital watches to tear apart, they just never stopped coming. And when weak man was already dead tired, a helicopter showed up as well to complicate things even more. I had to fight my way home, which was already under assault by the rotting dead forces, who brought my kill count to over 4,000. The next day was extremely foggy, so I decided to stay safely at home. I did some exercises, which was a skill I've been neglecting lately, and then I spent most of the day reading a book. Well, besides killing a couple more Zeds. I decided to brave the streets of Muldra again on day 154. Alas, the roads were even worse than before. Oh my god, what the fuck is this? There's so many. So then I became the garbage man, cleaner of roads. All the trash that civilization left behind was there for me to dispose of. And if the microplastic swimming in our bodies tells us one thing, it tells us that civilization is an outstanding machine for producing trash. I fought throughout the snowstormy day and when I finally returned back home in the evening, a present awaited me. Oh, what the fuck is this? Jesus. What are you all doing here? With so many zombies in the vicinity of my home, I had to do something about it. So I uninstalled the silencer from my shotgun, grabbed the Molotov and went to work. A ball of fire, a couple of hundred bodies strong was soon formed and I did everything I could to keep them occupied. Okay, okay, we got this, we got this. Just need to bob and weave 
Just bob and weave and we're good. Around 400 Zeds died a fiery demise on that day, and the road into town was once again a little more clear. And a good thing I cleared them, because... You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. How many helicopters could there be? Those zombies would be knocking on my doors if it weren't for my work the previous day. So I happily stayed inside on day 156 to read and work on the rooftop farm. As I went to refuel my car in the morning, I instantly realized the 400 zombies I fried were only a drop in the bucket called Modra. So I took a ride further up the road and learned that indeed there were still plenty of them kicking around. <laughs> oh, there's so many coming from the trees, fuck! But no matter how much they kicked, the poor, exhausted and panicked weak men kicked back until the road looked like something I'd paint after sniffing some high-grade oxy. Across 5,000 kills on that road and just as I turned back home, guess what? A heli showed up. So I decided to stay at home the next day. I repaired my generator for some extra electrical XP, then I exercised and read the final aiming book, which knowledge I put to good use when I returned to the Moldra Highway the next day. It didn't seem like I made a dent in the zombie population at all, but after I took down another 150 or so, I finally had a moment of peace to dismantle some electrical appliances, which at long last got me to level 3. I just wanted to take it easy the next day and prepare for my departure to March Ridge, but that got postponed because, you know what, I'm not even gonna mention what flew overhead once again. After that, one by one, the armies of the Rotten Dead arrived until my home was under siege and what awaited behind my house felt like a deja vu. Oh my god, this is behind my house? Look at this! And another thing that felt like a deja vu was what I heard on the radio late at night. But I was now ready to assault March Ridge. I grabbed some food and ammo, but then I realized my holster went missing overnight. So I spent that morning scavenging the nearby corpses in hopes of finding one, but no luck. I decided to visit the police station next, which was naturally visited by a helicopter. I dispatched the horde and when I finally found a holster, this happened. Like seriously, you gotta be kidding me. There's another fucking helicopter. What is going on in this city? Why is there so many of them? I escaped back home, which was already under siege, but there was little I could do about it. What followed were days of complete and utter madness. I cleared out the visitors in the morning, but when I tried to repair what they've broken, a heavy fog set in, which made weak men trip on the fence again. They kept on pouring from the fog to the point I had to pull back in hopes it would be clearer in the afternoon, which it wasn't. But late at night, my generator ran out of juice and I had no gas to refuel it. For fuck's sake! What else can go wrong? Frustrated, I tried to make a run to the gas station, but the zombie numbers and low visibility forced me to return home like a defeated little puppy. But I was ready the next morning, and with a rooftop advantage, I sniped the approaching hordes like a proper cowboy loaded up on beer and white supremacy ideas. I fought them all the way to the gas station, and refueling my generator felt like a biggest win in a long time. Weak men also reached level 9 in aiming after clearing out even more zombies, and I felt like alas, there would be a moment of peace. But day 164 said, Fuck peace. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Fuck no! Someone please count how many helicopters showed up in this video, because I lost count already. I also lost count how many times there was a horde plastered on my back wall and how many times they broke down my defenses. Weak men killed a thousand zombies in just those last four days of madness, reaching over 6,000 kills. There is so many corpses over here. Exhausted from all that fighting, I just wanted to chill on day 165. I read a book and did some farming, I repaired my gun, exercised and then read some more. So I would get ready for action. Yes, finally it was time to assault March Ridge and when I arrived… No way! No fucking way. Clearly, Project Zomboid hates weak men and wants him to die a painful death. If the Airborne Society, which were clearly the last survivors on Earth, wanted me dead, then so be it. But if they thought I would go down meekly like a I don't want to go outside because people scare me millennial, then they were fucking wrong. I didn't have to pull back though because all of this fighting made weak men, well, Week. But I returned the next day to the body filled streets, and because for once there was no heli, I actually managed to decently clear the neighborhood. I then snuck into the house I targeted and made sure the top floor was secure. With a home away from home semi established, my first night in March Ridge was peaceful, if we ignore yet another helicopter. But for once, the heli actually did its job by masterfully baiting most of the zombies away. That meant I could begin shaping this house into something more usable. I chopped down a few trees and built two ladders leading upstairs. In the afternoon, 
afternoon, I drove back to Muldra to load a truck with all the necessities for a prolonged stay in Martridge. On day 169, nice, I drove to the storage lots nearby because I was sure I could find a generator there. I established a killing ground inside, yelling, You shall not pass at zombies coming at me. With generator in tow, I was now totally ready to stay out of town for a while. And so I hit the roads towards my new home the next day, after filling up all the extra gas cans I could find. Zombies awaited me in March Ridge. Cannot build a house without cracking some omelets or something. But it was nothing I couldn't handle. I installed a generator, then I brought an oven and a fridge upstairs to build my new kitchen. But of course, I did forget something, a sledgehammer. And so I drove back to Muldra once again the next day, after stashing all the supplies I brought with me. Good thing the roads were clear. Bob and weave, just bob and weave. But that little trip wasted my whole day. The next morning, I started with interior decoration. Then I went outside to redecorate the streets as well. I'm sorry guys, you're right to assembly has been cancelled please disperse right now for some reason zombies didn't like my message but that didn't stop me from continuing my work throughout the day on day 173 i caught a bunch of creeps fornicating in my spare closet but i shouldn't be surprised this was america after all i then built a rooftop access so i could construct a rain collector for clean water supply i also took down the walls leading onto my outside platforms so i could build doors and stop using the windows to get inside like a fat thief dressed as santa I decided to explore the neighborhood the next day, and by that I mean I scavenged through the kitchens hoping to steal some employee's breast milk like a high rank blizzard executive, but no luck. I did find a survivor house though which was full to the brim of various high grade weapons. I then noticed the zombies trapped by the fence behind my house were not so stupid after all. These guys know how to get around. I woke up to a proper snowstorm the next morning, accompanied by a horrific wind chill, so I decided to stay inside and steal all the clothing from the corpses to learn more about tailoring. I reached level 2 in the afternoon, then began reading the next book, which I finished the following day. It's a very stormy weather outside still. Still horrific wind chill. So that meant another day spent inside. I exercised and worked on my tailoring until I reached level 3 in the evening. Happy New Year, you filthy animal. And indeed, it was a whole new year. But weak men felt alone and empty inside. Empty like my heart when I see only 7% of you watching this video are actually subscribed. But with a new year came calmer weather, so I decided to finally scout the hidden research facility. If we start shooting in the back, the zombies won't know how to get to us. I circle around it, scouting for weak points until I had a good idea how to approach it. On day 178, I was finally ready. I parked my car behind the facility where I thought it would be a good staging area. My car and shotgun blast attracted the zombies out of the building and to a better killing ground. Let's fucking go, we're aiming level 10 now. Holy shit. I cleared the whole back area, fighting until the negative moodles began stacking up, and then I retired for the day when Weakman's kill count crossed 7000. Of course, I returned the next day to continue my work. Zombie numbers were now much lower, which gave me the opportunity to explore indoors. Naturally, this wouldn't be a proper research facility without creepy ass cells full of bladed medical apparatuses. Apparatus? I... Whatever. You get the idea. The place was shady as fuck. On day 180, I returned for one final final time, cleared the zeds around the entrance and then broke into the guardhouse. I stole their guns and ammo and then did the same with the armory in the main building. Lastly, I explored the upstairs area, which was clearly a residency for those who required soft white walls, which is the comfort I crave every time I finish one of these videos. By this point, a heavy snowstorm severely obstructed my vision, which almost cost weak man his life. Fucking hell. Bitch almost got me. You'd think since I found no cure at the facility, I would be now done with Marchridge. You'd be right, well, almost. There was a library in a nearby community center, and while the darkness in the hallways inside almost scared weak men away, I pushed forward for the ultimate prize. Oh, let's go advanced models, fuck yes. In the evening, I loaded up my car with all the valuables I found in this town, and then I bid Marchridge goodbye. It was a shame to leave so many corpses behind, just imagine the amount of kidneys weak men could sell on the black market. If there was a black market anymore, maybe the airborne society had one, but the flying bastards have been quiet for the last few days. After a long ride in the not so pleasant weather, it was nice to see ye olde Muldra again. Home sweet home. There was a lot to do around the house, because it fell to disrepair in my absence. 
absence. I started with my rooftop farm, I removed all the rotting and wilting crops and then replanted them all in the freshly broken soil. Not only did I water them, I also fertilized them with Weakman's unique gamer juice. And speaking of gamer juice, Weakman was sweating it throughout the whole day 184, as I pushed him through rigorous exercise and reading routines. You see, my next goal awaited, Louisville. But to be ready for it, I needed my strength and fitness as high as possible, my metal working skill at level 6 for extra car protection and my tailoring as high as possible for weak men's body protection. And so on day 185 I threw myself hard at work to accomplish my goals. I began the day with exercise, then I went downstairs to greet the friendly neighborhood zombies. Look, if you're gonna trespass on my territory, you're gonna get shot like a Jamaican skateboarder doing 360s on my front lawn. Not that I have a lawn, I just like shooting stuff. I gotta clean all the cum covered rags. After cleaning the rags, I trained tailoring until I reached level 4 in the evening. The next day was not much different. I exercised, then I shot some neighbors and then I stole their clothes. Basically, a normal day in the life of an average American citizen. If we remove the exercise part, can't have any of that nonsense healthy living in the USA. I then studied the next tailoring book until late at night. Poor little baby had a nightmare, don't worry, we're gonna give you beer now and you're gonna be much better and you're gonna be able to sleep. There you go. And guess what I did the next morning? I exercised. Not that it did much for my XP levels. But then I switched things up. I trained tailoring first and then I went to shoot at neighborhood zombies. Late at night, when the negative moodles began stacking up high, my training finally paid off and I hit level 5. I was out of comrades on day 188, so I had to go on a short trip. Good thing there's always new comrag delivery services out here. There was always more zombies out there and after I successfully liberated them of their clothes, I was able to go back home to train. Alas, at this level the training process started to take a while and I only managed a third of a level before it was bedtime for a weak man. But I craved action, so I decided to go on an adventure next. I drove east towards Bedford, dismantling car wrecks along the way. Welcome to Bedford Falls. Oh, look at all those beautiful wrecks. Of course, by the time I arrived to my destination, weak man was already dead tired. But that didn't stop me. I showed the zombies the meaning of love in a Balkan way. Then I began dismantling car wrecks, always looking over my shoulder. It was stressful work, but it needed doing. So I continued the next day. Oh, uh, this is the shopping dead. I've been at the grocery store. For each wreck I dismantled, a group of zombies popped up that required re-education. I fought and welded, then fought and welded some more, thinking that each wreck might be my last. Doing this is fucking dangerous. You never know when there's gonna be a zombie right behind you and you can't look. But when I pushed deeper like the dwarves who dug Moria, I unleashed hell. I was basically surrounded, dead tired and quickly running out of shotgun ammo. I disengaged for a quick nap, then snuck back out at night to finish the last few wrecks. At midnight I escaped the town and on the road ran into the ultimate prize. Is that a katana or are you just happy to see me? I was able to relax the next day, beginning with exercise in the morning and then I burned my lunch. To improve my day and cheer me up, old friends arrived in the evening. It's been a while, airborne society, it's been a while, but the bastards have returned. I decided to deal with that issue the next day and spend the rest of the evening training weak men's tailoring skills. At risk of repeating myself, the next morning I started blasting. Good thing I popped them pills so I can now shoot them like a proper cowboy. There were enough zombies in and around my home to keep me occupied for the whole day. But if you think weak man wasn't ready, you were wrong. You see, while you were chasing hot chicks in college, he studied a shotgun. While you were yelling dicks out for Harambe, he was pondering his orb. So no, zombies stood no chance against him and as a final act of humiliation, he stripped them all naked in the end. A couple groups yet to remain the following day, so I cleared them out on my way to refuel the generator which was in need of maintenance as well. The first batch of new crops was also ready and I gathered a couple of fresh carrots. Then I went all in on tailoring and pushed weak men to the edge of exhaustion till he he finally hit level 6 at 2.30 in the morning. While I could have read the next book, I opted to go visit the pond instead. Fucking hell, where the fuck did you come from? There were a couple of Zeds there and two of my traps have been ruined, which was no real surprise since I've been away for quite a while. I spent the whole day fishing, which turned out pretty well. Three socks, that's amazing, and uh, three shoes, but he also caught a big pike 
and a small pie. I then returned back home and began reading the next tailoring book, which I continued to read the next morning after my daily exercise. Let's do some proper exercise, or did somebody say extra fries? I would love some extra fries right now. Alas, I did not finish the book. Instead, I grabbed all of my leather patches and began applying them to my clothing. Weak man's gear wasn't very protective. It was more suitable for winter. But when I was done, he was layered like a radioactive butterfly inside a 5G tower. Then I filled up the big propane tank at the gas station and grabbed a sweet 5.56 rifle. If you wonder why I've done all that, well, it was time for another adventure. I drove north towards Dixie, which is also a brand of portable toilets where I live, so that tells you a lot about the state of the town. But I wasn't interested in shit. I wanted the racks. But of course, I had to fight for them. Holy shit, this feels good. I love this rifle. I spent the whole day there, shooting zombies, dismantling racks, shooting some more zombies, dismantling some more racks, and so on. Until at midnight, dead tired, I finally took apart the last hunk of burned metal, reaching level 5 metalworking. But I still needed one more level for full vehicle upgrades, although I could do almost everything already. Alas, day 197 wasn't the day for all that. First, I replanted the carrots, and then I watered my rooftop farm. Ah yes, here we go again. How about another helicopter? We haven't seen one in a long time, have we? Naturally, the Airborne Society brought a party with them and I had to get rid of the rowdy mother truckers. Sneaky beaky like. She's never gonna see me coming. Or he, you know, I don't judge. I ended the day with the last VHS tape I owned, then continued to read the tailoring book. On day 198, I welded a new bull bar to one of my cars to see how much metalworking XP I get. And that's gonna be... nothing? Oh. Right. Which meant I needed more racks. But first, I took a ride to the zombie infested intersection, where I grabbed some plates, pipes and bars. All the things I needed to weld a roof rack to my trailer. It really surprised me I was able to do that, but I was glad for extra storage. The next day, I went towards Dixie Town again. Holy balls on a chopstick, the roads are full these days, dude. There were more racks waiting for me there, but the highway was full to the brim with the walking dead, and they made sure I knew I was welcome like capitalism in China. China. But I wasn't there to make friends. I was there to turn burned down car husks into big fat stacks of XP. But as is tradition, there were more zombies than there were wrecks. This is the last wreck that I can dismantle and we barely got not even a third up to level 6. This is gonna take a while. And while weak man was ridiculously tired, I pushed onwards. I scouted the car stop up ahead, then decided to take the back roads on my way home. There was a lot of forest and very little zombies and while I had the opportunity to explore a suspicious empty warehouse on the way, I decided to play it smart and follow the long road home. And then day 200 was here, and I decided to celebrate it with a blast. I drove to town, grabbed my rifle, and you guessed it, started blasting. All I have to do is stand in one spot and then get ambushed. <laughs> At first, it was pretty empty, but then more and more zombies poured out of the trees like crypto bros when you dare shit talk NFTs on Twitter. Ho <laughs> ho let's go, that's another katana boys. 200 Zeds fell to celebrate day 200, and that katana was a cherry on the top. Weak man has come a long way since his first 100. His skill count was over 8000 now, his skills proved that he was weak no more, but if he was to show that he truly is worthy of the strong man title one day, there was still so much to do. His next goal? 300 days and Louisville. But before I could have a crack at Louisville, I needed to properly prepare. So first challenge I wanted to tackle was improving my skills and crafting the next level of car armor for my truck and then go to the big city. But I didn't want to just survive on the outskirts, no. I wanted to conquer the zombie infested corridors of the Grand Ohio Mall or die trying. But first, there was a lot of work to do. Day 201 was still deep in the winter, but at least the cryogenic part was now over. And while weak men had a lot more to learn before he could become a strong independent woman, I wanted to start with first aid, the crafting skill I've been ignoring so far. And all I had to do was touch a corpse inappropriately every hour. Alright, that gave me like 6 points of first aid XP, which is not the best, but it's a start. So that's what I did for the rest of the day, while also gathering comrades from Zeds and learning tailoring. The next morning I woke up to a helicopter, which was instantly followed. Is that an airplane just after the helicopter? What the fuck is going on? My touching corpses paid off next, as weak men reached 
reached level 1 in first aid, but then the hordes following the airborne society arrived. I spent most of the day dispatching them with a pistol and a machete, like a Latin American drug lord, but it was worth it as I reached level 3 in Nimble. I started day 203 with exercise because I wanted to reach level 7 strength as soon as possible. I then spent some time tending to my garden and practicing first aid. Don't worry my friend, I'll be gentle and it will all be over soon. In the evening I finally remembered I can now reinstall the washer and the dryer, so I brought them upstairs and then plugged them properly before ending the day with some more exercise and tailoring training. Next couple of days I was focused on more of the same, leveling strength and first aid skills. I also wanted to sort the guns and ammo that still remained in the back of my box truck more than 100 days after I brought it back. Afternoon of day 204 brought some greenery for the first time in a long while and also a helicopter who attracted zombies I had to deal with in the evening. Christmas came early for you motherfuckers. Next morning I harvested a new batch of winter cabbages which probably tastes something like if a barefoot animal girl stepped into your salad. After an exercise I cleared my garage, grabbed more weapons from the truck, then this happened. Okay, this guy is saying something. I don't trust him. Clearly, the Airborne Society was evolving, but so was Weak Man, who reached level 2 in first aid and started reading the next skill book, dressed in a new outfit, which was clearly clogged with dirt, as I noticed a dirty Moodle for the first time, which was part of a new mod I added. That allowed me to test my new washer and dryer, and for the first time in forever, Weak Man had crispy clean clothes. Alas, his joy didn't last long, because his friends were back in force. Oh, this one is shooting! Holy shit, this one is shooting at zombies. I spent the evening clearing them out from the safety of my rooftop, even switching to a rifle for a bit. Then, I improved my new cloak with leather patches, which really improved my body protection. On the morning of day 207, I finished the first aid book, while push-ups brought me very close to the next level of strength. Then I decided to check outside and I found this. Holy fucking shit, there's so many in here. Indeed, there were too many, especially because weak man was incapable of running due to the exercise fatigue. I ended up kiting them around before escaping back upstairs while almost getting my leg eaten by zeds. As I woke up on day 208, another heli flew by just to say hello and after my morning exercise, I went to say hello to the hordes that followed it. For once, I wish this place would be full of furries, not zombies. You know, the thick, heavy kind. I was again tired, of course, so there was no running away from them. But I trusted in weak men just like I would trust the great Cornholio. And slowly, I managed to clear the zeds around my home. Then, after a short nap, I finally reached level 7 in strength, taking another step towards turning weak men into a strong man. In the evening, I snuck outside in the dark and took care of a couple more groups infesting the area. The next morning, I decided to go on an adventure. I drove to the bookstore in town, dispatched the group groups outside, then I snuck into the shop to see if I could find any advanced medical books and I got lucky with two. First aid is something I have never ever leveled up in Project Zomboid, but with the first aid overhaul mod, it actually is a fun skill, so I'm excited to actually do it. Back at home, more zombies awaited me and I dealt with them like I deal with beautiful women when they try talking to me, by hiding on the roof and running in circles. Coincidentally, that also increased my light-footed skill, which didn't really help me when I almost got jumped by a sneaky zombie while I was harvesting threat from corpses. On day 210, I started with squats to improve my fitness levels and then I spent the morning reading and practicing first aid. But of course, there was no way it could remain a peaceful day. Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. There's like two helicopters per day now. This is getting ridiculous. And just like hiding from women, I decided to stay upstairs and hide from whatever was outside. And I got rewarded by finally reaching level 3 first aid in the evening. But hiding like a fat little rat would get me no closer to my main goal. Surviving in Louisville, the most dangerous city in Project Zomboid. And as you know, my next check on the preparation list was getting metalworking to level 6. Even though I started the day to 11 by harvesting some tomatoes and potatoes, I then drove to the gas station to refill my big propane tank. I also did the math, which by itself was a terrible idea, and realized I don't have enough screws to upgrade my car. So I then drove to the nearby storehouse, took care of the guardians there, and got lucky with two boxes of screws, which rounded up a successful day. Is this gonna be like a first day without a helicopter? That would be insane.
I was then ready to go on an adventure, and my goal was West Point Bridge. Alas, I knew it would be a long trip. I'm so slow, I feel like a fat dog on a mobility scooter. Like, Sunday Driver is the absolute worst. It took me four long foggy hours to make it there, and luckily there was only one big group of Zeds around, which I managed to sneakily avoid in the thick fog. I spent the rest of the day dismantling ranks, which very slowly increased my metalworking skill. Alas, unfortunately, it went slower than the trains here in Balkan lands, when those trains go anywhere at all. When the fog dissipated, I found my balls and destroyed the zombies who were closing in on the bridge. I then continued to weld long into the night until not a single wreck remained. Alas, my skill was nowhere near level 6, so I decided to spend the night sleeping in the car. There was a zombie waiting for me when I woke up, but I escaped, not back home, but towards Louisville, because I knew there should be a big amount of burned car husks just outside the city itself. Ah, Louisville, it might have taken me seven months, but finally, weak man is on its border. I had to fight off around a hundred zombies who were weirdly attached to those ranks, just like my subscribers are weirdly attached to their fursuits. I then tiptoed my way from one vehicle to another, dismantling them until my propane ran out in the evening. I wish I could say I also reached level 6 metalworking, but I didn't, and had to turn back home. They say don't drink and drive, but well... That's a zombie apocalypse, who's gonna stop me? I should have known, saying something like that would go down as famous last words, because soon after, this happened. Oh shit. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that, <laughs> that is very bad. With a pop tire, my car slowed down to a crawl. My gas was in the red and Weakman was ridiculously tired. I was in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by zombies and trees and there was only one way this could go down. But Weakman popped them pills like a true American man and dispatched every single zombie on that road while my heartbeat was going crazy. I then checked my vehicle noticing both of the front tires were gone and since it was 3am I could do nothing but sleep in the car and only hope I survived the night. And survived survived the night, I did, but then it was time to escape back home. Well, this is a whole different bag of dicks, but I believe weak man's got this. I turned toward McCoy's in hopes of finding a working vehicle and water, which I had none left. I got lucky with an absolute wreck of a car, which got me to the logging grounds. I snuck past the hordes, broke into one of the buildings to get water, then began searching the parked vehicles. Oh, it works. Let's fucking go. It works. We got a decent working car. We got gas, it's time to go home. Weak man was absolutely tired and caked with filth, but I rejoiced when I finally returned to the safety of my fire station. I awoke to a snowstorm the next day, so I decided to spend the morning indoors. I exercised, practiced first aid, and when the weather calmed down a bit, I decided to check out the car tires. Needless to say, they all needed to be inflated, like that sex doll you're hiding under your bed thinking your mom has no idea it exists. Trust me, she knows. In the afternoon, another heli flew by and then I heard this on the radio. Loot runner heading out. Oh, what does that mean? Naturally, it meant another morning visitor who brought with some very sneaky zombies. He's waiting for me. He's just waiting to pounce, what a dildo. But sneaky or not, I dispatched the group once again, then worked my way towards the gas station. I refueled the blue truck and all my empty gas cans because I knew I'll need plenty of gas when I go to reclaim my police car. In the evening, my first aid practice finally paid off as I reached level 4, and if you're wondering why I've been trying to increase the otherwise useless skill, well, with first aid overhaul mod, I had access to things like crafted advanced bandages and adrenaline syringes. Day 217 was the saving private police officer car day. I jumped into the blue truck and headed to the highway. There we go, there's my beauty. It would be a true crime to leave you behind. A crime like putting pineapple on pizza, which to be honest is a crime people should go to prison for. I killed the remaining Zens, refueled the police car, then it was time to become a mechanic. This kind of minimum wage job might be beneath most of you, but Weakman tore apart his truck, uninstalling every single brake, suspension and tire, and then reinstalling them all on the armored car. The result was the same as if you left your vehicle unattended on a side road in the Balkan countryside, and as I drove away, only a blue husk remained behind. I started the next day with fitness training and a heli flyby, mixed with some target practice from the rooftop. 
I then harvested fresh broccoli, finished reading the third first aid book and exercised some more. Another heli showed up the next morning as I was practicing first aid, so I decided to celebrate and I baked a tray of delicious biscuits. You see, it's the small things in life that keep you going. Why don't you just move over here, huh? Why don't you just live in my base, you fucking helicopters? Oh, he's, he's making noises again. And if you thought that was the last one of the day, you'd be wrong because a third one showed up in the evening as I was running in circles on the roof to get weak man's sprinting skill to level 3. After all those helicopters, I expected there's gonna be plenty of Zeds waiting for me the next day and I was not disappointed. Oh my god, are you shitting me? Look at this! That's insane! I fought them with bullets and blades, but they flocked to me like sims to a male VTuber posing as an anime girl with tickle bitties. The battle lasted most of the day and in the end, weak man crossed 9000 kills, which put him in the range of being able to become desensitized at last. I spent most of the day 221 doing chores around the base, then I drove to the gas station to refill the big propane tank. I wanted to reach level 6 in metalworking at last, without driving half across the world to dismantle car wrecks. So I started destroying everything I could around the gas station. This is like the least safest thing you could do in the middle of the night where you can't see shit. While it wasn't exactly safe, it was still worth the XP. And I wanted more XP the next day, but... Oh Jesus, you guys surprised me there! With my pants now stained brown, I then drove into town and dismantled the whole storehouse worth of big metal shelves. Of course, that wasn't enough, so I moved to the house next door and then this happened. Woo, that was close. Oh my god. I had to get up from my PC to change my pants after all this, but I was now barely 100 XP away from level 6, and I was determined to finally reach it. A couple of Zeds tried to stop me, but they failed. I dismantled a couple more shelves, and at long last, I made it. I was now able to install better protection on my car, so I did the math and realized I'll need 28 metal pipes, metal sheets, and 20 metal bars. That was a lot, and I was about to go find it when this happened. What the fuck was that? What what the hell is going on? I think they're bombing something. No idea what that was, but it didn't stop me from driving to the old intersection where I spent the evening gathering materials. The next morning, I removed one door protection from the car and rejoiced when I saw I got some materials back. That meant that in total, I needed to gather much less than I thought at first, and I got what I needed at the storehouse. I knew armoring the car would be a lengthy process, so I parked it in the garage for safety. Alas, with all the broken walls, it wasn't safe at all. So. I spent the rest of the day rebuilding them and patching any hole I could find, but like destructive little Karens, zombies instantly took offense to that. The fucking instant I built something you're already here smashing crap? Day 225 was finally the armoring day, or I guess this armoring, because it took me half of the day to dismantle all of the old armor, and by that point, weak man was queasy from all the corpses he was locked in with in the garage. Just imagine the smell in there, it must have smelled like a Twitch streamer apartment. I was back into the garage of death the next morning, and it was time to armor it up. Oh man, how am I gonna even see through this tiny hole? This, this can't be safe, right? This can't be legal. Not that there was anyone left who could tell me what's legal anymore, and the Zeds didn't seem likely to evolve in that direction, so I worked on the car until Weak Man was queasy again. A heli surprised me in the evening, just as I was feeling lucky for not seeing it for a couple of days. Which meant the back wall was destroyed the next morning, and Zeds were waiting for me in the garage. You know what? Zombies breaking down my back door is the ultimate truth of Project Zomboid. In fact, if you google rule 34 for zombies right now, well, you can learn all about that. I then had to dispatch all the walking corpses around the base, which proved to be a useless endeavor, because in the afternoon, another heli showed up. Seriously, just eat me instead of breaking my shit constantly. So I had to repeat the whole process before I was able to plug the holes once again. Only a few Zeds remained the next day, which meant I could finally go back to armoring. I installed the two missing doors and then it was done. Two more skills remained on my checklist, getting fitness to level 7, which was already very close, and then mechanics to level 5, so I could repair the engine on my truck if needed. I focused on doing squats the next morning, then I practiced first aid and read a book. When I exercised in the afternoon, it finally happened. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. 
finally at long last level 7 fitness and strength you'll love to see it only mechanics remain now before i was ready for louisville but i noticed i was running very low on 45 acp ammo so i spent the evening preparing a new gun i pimped out the desert eagle i had lying around and while i didn't have too much ammo for it i wanted to make every bullet count so naturally i had to test it the next morning Damn, that sounds cool. While it sounded really cool, it also sounded really loud, even with a suppressor. I then drove to the bookstore because I wanted to check if there was a sneaking level 4 book there, but the illiterate masses tried to stop me, so I had to educate them and we all know there's no better education technique than a bullet to the cranium. Naturally, the book I was looking for wasn't there, so I went back home. Just as I reached level 6 in first aid, a heli showed up again and I had to deal with the fallout. The last 8 bullets of this pistol that has served me for for a long ass time. I switched to Desert Eagle next and kept on blasting well into the night, but it was so loud, zombies kept on showing up. So I finished the last few with a machete and then I prepared a new sidearm, a 9mm pistol which could hold a 50 ammo drum. And I needed that bad boy as I drove to the Courtman Medical the next day after another morning heli. Everything is so empty around here because all of the population of the city just keeps on coming to my base due to the constant helicopters. Well, it was not empty at all. In fact, I had to use more than 100 bullets to dispose of the corpses waiting for a checkup at the doctor, which basically sums up everything wrong with American public healthcare system. But after I turned them all to mince meat, I was able to sneak inside to get what I was looking for, a scalpel. I knew I'd need one to continue leveling first aid, and with that mission accomplished, I returned back home, where I was greeted by a big group of Zeds. The next morning, Morning finally broke me. I am fucking disabling this shit. But first, I spent the day leveling my mechanic skill until weak man got queasy once again. So I decided to do what needed to be done and I carried every single corpse onto a pile outside until the garage was clean. No helicopters, it's so peaceful out here. And so I was able to work in safety at long last. I spent the day grinding away at mechanics until weak men got very tired. Then I read a book and practiced first aid. I hid from the heavy snowstorm the next day and my work in the garage finally paid off with level 5 mechanics. Then I spent the evening towing the old training racks out of the garage so I could move the box truck inside which caused a lot of noise. Like how dude? You could just bite me or something why do you have to destroy my shit and then it was down to the last step loading up my truck with everything i could possibly carry but weak men had all thumbs straight which meant i spent the whole day loading up with guns ammo tools and weapons and at the end of the day i wasn't even halfway done so i continued on day 236 transferring food books medicine and even more guns which i continued doing the next day until i realized i can armor up the trailer as well as i didn't have the necessary resources I drove to the warehouse where a couple of groups of Zeds made me work for the materials. When I had enough, I installed the fresh armor and then continued loading the truck. And now we should have enough ammo in here to basically liberate half of Bosnia. Worried I'll forget something, I went through my things multiple times. I also refueled the car and filled up every gas can I had. I also washed my clothing and loaded up the last few things into the trailer. You know what? Tonight, we get drunk. Tonight, we celebrate with bourbon because... You never know what tomorrow brings. And then on day 239, I said my goodbyes. Goodbye, my sweet prince. It was nice knowing you. I promise to return one day if I survive. I then spent most of the day weaving past zombie hordes on the way to Louis, but I didn't want to go knocking on the front door. So I took the side roads and 10 hours later, the extremely exhausted weak men finally made it to the border. Oh, we finally made it, almost 10 hours later. I took out the Zeds around the fence, then wanted to rest in the car. Alas, weak man was terrified of the unknown and refused to sleep. So I drove further into the wilderness to a safe spot where I spent the night. I broke the fence in the morning and then crossed the border into Louisville. I first stopped at military checkpoint. Welcome to Louisville, motherfucker. I searched it for loot and grabbed the generator and then I continued to another checkpoint where I repeated the whole process. At this point, my gas levels were getting pretty low, so I stopped at the burned out town, made a hole in the fence, then connected the generator at the one remaining gas pump. Zombies tried to stop me, but I successfully refueled my truck and then drove deeper towards the Louis and stopped at the farmhouse to spend the night. Weak man woke up early the next morning, excited to go deep deeper into the city. I have to admit 
I was pretty nervous how this was going to go, especially because my goal was to get as close as possible to the Grand Ohio Mall. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in Louisville proper, so it's time for a party. I started the party a few blocks away from the mall, and lucky for the tired weak men, it was a short party, or should we say shardy. As a fellow sharding enjoyer, I disposed of the zombies around the Knox radio station, and then decided to claim it as my new base. I parked my truck into the garage, attached a bunch of emergency escape ropes, then I brought a generator to the roof. I cleared the fresh invaders in the morning, then I brought upstairs a fridge and filled it with my perishables. I also destroyed the access to the stairs, so I was now safe upstairs. I then planted some potatoes on the roof, destroyed furniture for planks, and used those to build a water collector barrel next to my farm. Of course, this was Louis, so zombies broke inside in the evening, probably trying to grab the couch I had my eye on. Please do not break. Fuck! So I had to continue to sleep on a shitty office chair, but that didn't stop me from improving my new home. I installed new counters and a sink, which I connected to the rooftop barrel. I also removed all the terminals in the room and replaced them with storage containers. Since it started to rain, I decided to grab more soil and planted even more potatoes. Then I cleaned the whole room to make space for a comfy bed, which I went to search for the next morning in a full out thunderstorm. Stealthing up to Zeds got me to sneaking level 6, and many of them met their demise at the end of my 9 mill barrel. I then found what I was looking for in the nearby apartments and brought it back home so weak man could finally get some good quality sleep. In the evening, I then broke a hole in the floor so I could have an easy access directly into the garage. I woke up to uninvited visitors on day 245 and then decided to take care of the reinforcements as well, showcasing just how far weak man has made it. Weakman was incapable of speaking to women before the zombie apocalypse, but look at him now! Look at him go! From my daily trip, I also brought back an oven, and I cooked a stew so Weakman could celebrate in style. I also brought more storage containers upstairs and began filling them up. The next day, I went on an adventure and drove to the nearby gas station, where I set up my second generator after dispatching the locals. I also found a lot of trash food inside, then I went to scout the mall. Good shit. The Grand Ohio Mall and all the lag spikes that go with it. Now I knew what I'll have to deal with, but first I wanted to turn Knox Radio into a proper home where Weakman could have space for his personal time. Spotting zombies from the roof the next day gave me an idea. I grabbed my 308 sniper rifle and noticed I can indeed snipe Zeds a whole screen away. I can shoot them over that roof. Oh my god, that's amazing. I had fun with my new rifle, then I finally reached first aid level 7 in the afternoon, which meant I now had a use for that scalpel. I then snuck across the street and almost got got. Jesus, how did I not see you? Overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer indeed, but I survived without a scratch this time and then broke into the nearby gun store. I was hoping for some shotgun or 9mm ammo, but all I found was pretty useless to me. But at least I now had a locker to store the sniper rifle on the roof. After some midnight rooftop sniping, I exercised for the first time in a while, and weak men felt it the next morning, as I snuck back to the apartment complex to grab even more things. I am a thief that comes in the night. Actually, not even the night. I come in the middle of the day, then I steal your furniture. I placed the cupboards and then decided to cover the nasty stain on the ground. And slowly but surely, the Knox radio was turning into a cozy home. In the evening, I then went to grab some cum rags from the corpses outside, so I could train my tailoring skill once again. I spent half of day 250 working on that, but it wasn't quite enough to get me to the next level. I then exercised, checked up on my taters, practiced first aid, and did some more midnight sniping. I went on an adventure the next day, and I grabbed a new rifle to test it out. This gun is very rapid fire, but but it really does not do as much damage as you would hope. Unfortunately, it didn't last long because the suppressor broke pretty fast, so I had to switch to my trusty 9mm sidearm. Like a true Slav, I robbed a liquor store along the way, then I continued to the fire station where my targets awaited. Yes, I wanted to grab one of those big boys, and I got lucky that they were all in perfect condition. I broke in, hotwired the engine, and brought it back home. The next day, I had to go on a perimeter check because a lot of single Zeds wanted to mingle with weak men. In the afternoon, I broke down more furniture inside the radio station to get planks, which I used to build a second ring collector barrel on the roof. On day 253, I returned to the apartments behind the station, and I stole a washer and a dryer. The strength of weak men to climb up this rope with a washing and clothing dryer in his inventory is crazy. I then installed the two machines underneath the new barrel, which allowed me to wash my clothing, and while I waited for them to dry, I gave weak men a new trim. The next morning, I grabbed my sledge and drove to the nearby storage lots. I 
fought the locals inside and one of them was nice enough to provide me with a key for the whole facility. I grabbed a sweet new sofa then hit the jackpot with a locker full of ammo and guns. I looted the whole place and stored the useful things in my car. Then I went back upstairs for the big fancy couch. Please don't break this beautiful couch. No, come on. He was really tired at this point, so I had to return home, where Weakman enjoyed some bourbon on his new sofa. On day 255, I destroyed the big dishes on the roof to make space for a new farm plot where I planted tomato seeds, which I found the previous day. I then practiced first aid and ripped apart all the useful clothing I could find on corpses, so I could spend the rest of the day training tailoring, which I got to level 7 in the evening. Day 256 was the first day of spring. And like a bear awoken from his slumber, I returned to the storage lots where I instantly got lucky with a shotgun and 9mm ammo. Then a couple of zeds broke out of one of the storage lockers and I put my master baiting skills to good use once again. I need your key boys. Give me your fucking keys. It took me multiple more kills before I finally got it, which allowed me to loot the rest of that row before I went home for the day. But I craved action, so I drove to a mini mall next to the gas station. The population in there wasn't so mini though, and an epic battle followed. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Weakman's 10,000th kill. He was now entering the meta. The gun was his muse and he ascended past all the normies on the leaderboard. My real goal in that slaughterhouse was a small bookstore in the back and I snuck in in hopes of finding the next reloading or sneaking book. Alas, no luck, so I had to return back home, but I did not return empty-handed. The next morning, you guessed it, I was back to the storage lots. Follow me, follow me, follow me. My horrible singing worked and I got a key for the next row. Unfortunately, the loot wasn't any good and zombies were trying to break out of three separate lockers, so I left them to it and promised to return. Back home, I inappropriately fondled a corpse, which brought my first aid skill to level 8, allowing me to begin working on the next book. On day 259, I drove to the storage lots for the one last time. Zeds who were trapped inside failed to break out, so I tried some more key baiting, which brought my long blade skill to level 4. If you want something done, you gotta do it yourself. Yourself. Can't rely on zombies. So I broke into every locker, finding a little but a few Zeds. I stopped to clear the road on the way back, but unfortunately my suppressor broke, so a very tired weak man had to use his katana, which he almost completely destroyed. He was covered in so much blood, he woke up as a complete nervous wreck the next morning, so I threw all of his clothing into the washer and then exercised naked while waiting for it to dry. Then in the evening, I repeated the exercise and read a book, which I continued doing the next day, until I finished the first aid book and while preparing dinner, Weakman also hit level 6 in cooking. I had an adventure planned on day 262 and I grabbed an extra suppressor to keep on me as an emergency at all times. Then I drove past the big mall towards the video store and started blasting. One at a fucking time. Like a true American hero on 4th of July, Weakman stood his ground, taking down anyone who dared to question his cholesterol levels, and in the end, he was of course victorious. And I rejoiced when I saw I had 5 new tapes to watch. I returned to the scene of the crime the next day, and then drove a bit further up the road to a nearby bookstore. Sorry Zeds, I'm just passing through, I know if you wanna come and bite me, I'll have a gun ready for you. Lucky for me, the crowd was smaller around there, and I disposed of them quickly. Then I snuck into the bookstore and grabbed a bunch of books. I needed. I also checked the groceries next door and came out loaded up like a fat kid in a candy shop. I was back to burpees the next morning, coupled with a cooking book. Then I continued turning weak men into strong men in the afternoon. I continued with rigorous exercise on day 265, combined with book reading and first aid practice. Then I switched it up a bit in the evening. My dude is finally catching all those shows he has missed in the first week of the zombie apocalypse. Weak men has been chugging painkillers like candy to be able to sleep with all that muscle pain and I was running dangerously low on them, so I decided to break into the local dentistry next, where I found heaps of prescription medication and an empty syringe. Happy with my haul, I then exercised some more and finished reading the next reloading book. I decided to visit the fire station again the next day, where I played tennis with the local population, but my Djokovic-like skills were for some reason not appreciated, so I decided to break inside. Excuse me lady, I'm just trying to eat here, could you give me some space please? But of course, she didn't give me space, and in fact, 
gang brought a group of rude friends along. After I've dealt with them, I stole a pool table and a comfy couch from the station and returned back home. You see, I had an idea for a rec room and the foggy day 268 seemed like a perfect time to make it happen. I cleaned up the trash from the room below my main home, dismantled the old electronics and got rid of the office chairs. Then I brought the pool table and a couch upstairs. I'm not quite happy with how this looks, but I think it's a decent start. I then dismantled some more furniture to build a composter on the roof. I wanted to grab some additional goodies for the rec room, so I drove to the storage lot and spent half of the day searching for it. There we go. That's the bad boy I was looking for. When I returned back home, a fully kitted out nomad survivor was waiting for me and I stole his fresh bread. Then I fixed the rec room. Now that is starting to look like a proper rec room now, a place where weak men could just chill. And indeed, he spent the rest of the evening chilling with a good book. Alas, he didn't chill for long because it was about time I do something about that big bad mall. And you see, I had a plan. First I chopped down some trees, then I broke a wall to get access to the roof. I then built stairs because I wanted to create a sky highway to the apartment block overlooking the mall, so I spent the rest of the day working on that. This is fucking scary. I don't like doing this. <laughs> oh my god. It might not look high, but trust me, a drop from there would mean weak man's death. I chopped down more trees the next morning and continued building the skyway, creating real things with my below minimum wage hands. I stopped just before the window so as to not give any Schrodinger zombies the chance to walk the skyway at night. And then I snuck back in the morning and broke inside. The first apartment was empty, so I quickly broke the access to the stairs and now the whole top floor was mine. This might be the window that's gonna give us access close to where we want to be. And then I spent most of the day exploring the apartments, making sure no Zeds remained and borrowing all the food supplies I could find. Day 273 greeted me with beautiful weather, but it didn't stop me from carrying all of my 308 ammo to my new hideout. Where the fuck are all the zombies? What? <laughs> There's, oh, there, there's some. I then returned to grab the sniper rifle as well, but I wasn't quite happy with the reach from the window. So I smashed it to pieces, then went back home to watch the last remaining VHS tape and level up my first aid all the way to 9. I gathered more wood the next morning and then began building a platform extending from the hideout, created to give me bigger reach. Let's see how far we can see now. Oh yeah, that's better. That is better. Satisfied, I went to chop down even more trees to build a fence at the end so not to accidentally turn into Icarus. Day 275 was the day. The weather might not be perfect, but weak man is ready to party with some zombies. I threw a mouth off and totally missed, so I waited for Zeds to group up and caught them with another. As I ran away, I tripped and scratched my leg, but not even that could stop me. I sniped the burning zombies from the safe perch, sending them to meet their maker, which probably was some kind of anime enthusiast doctor who accidentally created them in a lab trying to vet grow his new waifu. Alas, zombie numbers quickly dwindled and I was disappointed with how few of them turned up, so I knew I had to go back to the drawing board. I grabbed a different rifle the next day and went in for take two. I parked much closer to the mall this time around and instantly got them with a the molotov. In a matter of seconds, their numbers began skyrocketing and so was my sneaking skill. <laughs> Look at this sneaking level up! Oh my god, look at this. I danced in the spot until I reached sneaking level 7. Then I started blasting into the crowd. Some of them followed me, so I had to deal with them. And at this point, the mall was on fire. But then, this happened. Okay. No, 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 no. No! The crash reset the clock to morning. The fire was gone, and so were the Zeds. Oh my god, this is so anticlimactic. <laughs> is the mall just empty now? But of course, it was not empty. I blasted my way deeper into the building, tactically nuking the zombies flying from the sky until weak men reached 11,000 kills. Not to be deterred by a little bitty crash, I went straight back to the mall the next day and parked at the east entrance this time around. Alright, uh, throw it. Run! Just run, buddy. Just run. Let's go. I snuck into the brush and noticed weak man was not panicked. And then it dawned on me. At long last, he was desensitized to the horrors of the apocalypse. And the horrors burned bright like the oh so many smelly hungry stars. This is the barbecue that I wanted to see. This is it. This is what real America feels like. I sniped the last few that remained. Then I let them all burn. 
and I let it burn in peace the next day as well and focused on my base. I planted cabbages and repaired the generator. Then I exercised, read a book and harvested a fresh batch of tomatoes in the evening. But the mall was still in the back of my mind, specifically the gun store in there. I drove out back past the fires then I broke inside. Alas, the tight corridors were under a constant assault by Zeds and I had to leave multiple times to fight them off in and outside. Fuck it, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, we have a couple. Going in there was a rough call, and with my pants stained brown, I had to admit defeat and drove back home to plan my next step. And the next step was pretty clear to me. Zombies, it is time to party once again. I parked at the western entrance and then had to run like the wind. After escaping to safety, I slowly fought my way back up the street, sniping the Zeds one by one until I made it to the big ball of fire. I watched them burn, reaching sneaking level 8 and light-footed level 7 before it happened again. Not a fucking gun, are you kidding me? Once again, the clock reset, the corpses in the fire was gone and my way into the gun store was clear, so I grabbed a bunch of guns and ammo. The next morning was extremely foggy, perfect in fact to sneak back into the mall. I grabbed more canisters of ammo, then decide to try out a new machine gun. Alas, the silencer broke real fast. Oh yeah, this bad boy is very loud. And then the game crashed once again even though there was no fire this time around and I decided I was done with a stupid mall for there were plenty other dangerous places I could scavenge in Louisville. But first, weak men deserved a break. So on day 282 I practiced first aid. Then I went to recover the sniper rifle and all the ammo from my hideout. What is he aiming at? What do you see? It's gotta be a crawler somewhere. I then washed my very bloody clothing and exercised. On day 283, I repaired my old, almost broken katana. Then I drove to the gas station to refuel the car and empty gas cans. I read a book, exercised and then spent the evening chilling in the rec room. On the dark, rainy day 284, I then decided to go on another adventure. I drove past the mall and through the unexplored and very zombie infested roads deeper into Louisville. Oh my fucking god, there is many. My goal, a video store close to the riverside. I started blasting with my shoddy, turning into a proper Rambo to deal with the hordes wanting to eat my ass. Look, I got nothing against the ass eating. You do you, okay? But I personally prefer my ass teeth and tongue free. God, I miss this shotgun. This is such a good feeling. Yep, that lady went through three t-shirts to scratch my torso. Due to my high first aid skill, I could see just how severe the wound really was and pissed at myself for my overconfidence, I dealt with the rest of the Zeds, then looted the store. I found two useful tapes which I then watched in the evening. Fearing the shadow of that dreaded queasy moodle, I stayed inside the next day. I exercised to keep healthy, read a book, patched my torn clothing and then repeated the whole process. Weak men seemed healthy, but I decided to take it easy for another day. I read, I exercised. I practiced first aid and I marveled at my beautiful rooftop farm. I also trained tailoring with my remaining thread and then planned for the next day. Okay, or we could go get some fishing done. Alas, I couldn't go fishing just yet because I had no tools for the job. So I drove to the hardware store deeper into Louisville. I dispatched a few remaining Zeds, then I snuck inside. I found twine and some useful tools, but no fishing rods, and then I looted the food store next doors as well. Back at home, I used the twine to then create two fishing rods. On day 288, I drove to the riverside southeast of the mall. This could be the prime fishing spot, I think. I got rid of the natives, chopped down some trees and then began building the platform. It took me half of the day, but in the end, I was satisfied with my little shack. Over here, we are under roof and zombies can't really get to us. So it's gonna be perfect prime fishing spot. I went to fish the next day, using worms as bait. Unfortunately, they ran out pretty fast, but I was very happy with what I caught. With plenty of daylight remaining, I then decided to go forage for a bit. Alas, the forest was very infested and had to constantly fight for every stick and stone I could find. But in the end, I reached level 3. I cooked a delicious fish stew the next morning and then I drove to the fire station to pick up a heavy duty car battery I left back there. Sir? How fucking dare you? I then practiced first aid for one last time, reaching max level. And then I also reached level 6 in farming after I harvested a fresh batch of cabbages. My freezer was now full to the brim, so I drove to the gas station to borrow their popsicle fridge. I snuck back to the gas station on day 291 and installed that battery into a truck there. I fueled it up and then drove to the bookstore nearby where I had my eye on another truck. I looted the store first though, finding plenty of survival books, but not the farm 
alarming level 4 book I was looking for. I then switched the car batteries and drove back home. Alright, look at this. We got ourselves a new truck and I like the way it moves. My plan for that truck was to armor it up eventually, but for now I just parked it in the garage. The next day I drove to the small mall to look for the farming book. Problem here is you never know what's upstairs. And indeed they started falling and crawling from upstairs. I didn't find my book, but I found a rifle suppressor and a lot more zombies. Whoa, this guy almost dropped right on top of me. Back home, I harvested a fresh batch of potatoes. Then I began redecorating the room next to my rec room because I wanted to turn into a small library. But to make that a reality, I needed that elusive farming book first and I decided to search for it inside the Grand Ohio Mall. The thick fog hid me well as I snuck inside, but even after searching the whole huge bookstore there, I had no luck. So instead, I stole a bunch of furniture in a petty revenge and those shelves fit perfectly into my new library room. Okay. This is a start, it's not perfect. On day 294, I was still on the hunt, so I drove to the small bookstore north of the Grand Mall and started blasting. The thread though was just like the majority of Discord users prefer it, minor. I then searched the bookshop, alas I didn't find what I was looking for. But not to return empty handed, I then looted the candy store as well and grabbed some nice clothing. I also broke into a furniture store near my base to finish my library. I can't really say it all fits together nicely, but you know what? It sparks joy and I like it. The next morning, I was back on the road. There was another bookstore I wanted to check, but the hordes of angry librarians were waiting for me. Last time I said how much I enjoyed a shotgun, I got scratched, so I'm not gonna repeat that any jam. <laughs> Alas, they couldn't stop me from looting the store. Oh, let's fucking go, we found it. Oh my god, fuck yes. I searched the shops around for more useful items, finding some new clothing and a lot of zombies. Then I returned home to read in safety. And in safety, I remained the next day. I washed my clothing, I exercised, I trimmed weak men's beard and learned about farming. On day 297, I then decided to go back to fishing, but I only caught one small catfish while breaking one of my fishing rods. So that wasn't very successful and I decided to make it a better day by doing some more foraging around. But even that didn't go as planned. Could you please stop interrupting my work? Like angry bees, they pursued me until I gave up for the day and decided to return in the morning, but this time I drove further out of town to avoid zeds. That worked well and uninterrupted it, I found some wild herbs and berries, reaching level 4 in the process. The one grasshoppers I also found, I then used as a fishing bait to catch a small crappy, and then I spent the rest of the evening studying. On day 299, I decided to go on an adventure again. Now why would I be cozy and safe when I can go do something stupid and dangerous? There was a police station I wanted to loot, and as I parked behind it, I already began to regret my decision. Zed sworn weak men in huge numbers, but his trusty shotgun kept him alive and well, to the point where I began pushing back the horde. But of course, they found a way to get behind me. But like a true man with not much to gain, but everything to lose, I soldiered on. More than 200 corpses were laid to rest in that parking lot, but that allowed me to push inside. I got into armory, but then the Zeds broke down the only exit out of it. Trapped in a small room with no way out, I fought for my life. How the fuck? Do I get out now? My hands were shaking and my pants were full, but I turned the armory into a room of death until I finally got an opening. Holy fuck, man. Oh, that was fucking scary. Jesus. Before leaving, I also checked that SWAT van parked behind the station and promised to return for it another day. But then, it was here. Day 300 has arrived and Weakman not only survived for two months in Louisville, he actually made the city his bitch. Well, if we ignore the many times he was close to death. But as always, his eyes were turned to the future, where one last step remained on his path to become the strongest man alive, surviving for a whole year. But that didn't mean the last 65 days would be easy. There were two more major challenges I wanted to overcome. First, the military base situated at the entrance to Louisville, ripe with zombies and military loot. And second, the big downtown police station, one of the most dangerous and heavily populated places in entire Project Zomboid. And the fact that some of the zombies learned how to sprint was not going to help at all. And so I decided to take day 301 easy and began by redecorating the rooms downstairs. I dismantled old electronics and destroyed the table to make space for a cozy bedroom for weak men. Oh great, he is now very bored. 
bored you love to see that. But that didn't stop me. So I snuck to the apartments behind the station and stole a big old bed. And only then did I spend the evening reading anti-boredom comics. The next morning, I drove to the furniture store where I grabbed a rug and then broke half of the furniture in the shop before finally snatching a closet and drawers. I installed them in the bedroom and then moved my spare clothes downstairs before spending the evening training tailoring. On day 303, I drove to the gas station to refuel my truck. Then I went into the wilderness to forage again. Alas, the weather was very far from perfect, but I pushed on. Hey, not even the bad weather can stop me from finding such amazing things like broccoli. When I returned home, I harvested and replanted my cabbages. Then I repaired and refueled the generator on the roof. The next day, I snuck to the Grand Mall parking lot, where I successfully borrowed a car. Oh shit, that's our first sprinter. Look at it go! Watching it jog made me realize that maybe, just maybe, I shouldn't be as confident as I was. But then I was back at the police station and there was nothing else to do but blast. I tested my new shotgun and was happy with the carnage it dealt. And that carnage allowed me to peek inside the station once again. But I was too afraid to explore it, so I just grabbed the SWAT van and brought it back home. I passed more joggers on my way and that gave me an idea. And the idea was to connect the big apartment building with the even bigger one across the road via a new skyway. Looks like we got some onlookers over here. People wanna join in on the party. I reached the huge building with ease and broke the roof to get access inside. Holy shit, that's a lot. That is... That is a lot. We go back up. I was definitely not ready for close quarters combat with bad exit strategy, so I created another entrance then went back home to harvest fresh tomatoes. And then I returned the next morning with a new plan. I'm not sure if it's smart using a siren this close to home, but... Let's fucking do it. Let's hope these guys who are up here are gonna come down. I slowly drew up the road in hopes of getting them out. Then I snuck around back home. I used the rope to repel in once again and very quickly a whole hell broke loose. Clearly, my plan did not work and I painted the hallway red with the blood of my enemies. Oh, we got a jogger. We got a fucking jogger. I stacked skulls for the skull god and I pushed deeper and deeper, wading up to my knees in blood and corpses. But as I almost made it to the stairs, a huge horde pushed back up and I had to retreat back to safety after crossing 13,000 kills. I let the zombies rest the next day and drove out of town to forage. I found sticks and stones and herbs and then I made it into the deep forest which gave me an idea. So I chopped down a couple of trees in the evening and turned them into four wooden box traps. Then I returned to the deep forest the next morning and placed those traps at cabbage's bait. I spent some more time foraging, getting up to level 5 in the process and fighting some ginseng, which I then turned into adrenaline syringe at home. It restores energy but induces hunger and thirst. That is gonna be like a last resort thing that we're gonna definitely keep. Then I chopped some more wood and built another rain collector barrel. I went to check my traps the next morning. These traps are all good, but after 300 days of loneliness, I'm sure Weakman would prefer any other kind of trap. But what he got from those traps made him happy as well. Well, I then cleared some zeds who were encroaching on my home turf. Then I cooked a delicious Bugs Bunny soup full of wild herb goodness that would keep weak men warm for the tough day ahead in the corridor of death. But the thing is, I am the death here. Ah, fuck. I fought for every inch of gore splattered carpet in that hallway, pushing zeds back one shot at a time, but they kept on coming. Oh man, I bet these zombies wore turtlenecks in their real life. They're the worst. Alas, I didn't give up. I kept on pushing until I finally got an opportunity to start smashing. But they must have heard me because more came upstairs to interrupt my work. But in the end, I was victorious. Come on, let's destroy this. Let's fucking go. Okay. At long last, the top floor was secure. And like Arnold, I promised the remaining Zeds I'll be back. And back I was the next day. I was sure the place would be pretty empty, but... Oh, we got a runner. We do not have a runner anymore. Indeed, more runners showed up mixed with the hordes and it took me the whole morning before the last zombie hit the floor. I then looted the apartments, mostly looking for food. I returned on day 312. You know what I see here? I see a sea of rags. And indeed, that's what I spent my whole day on, until Weakman was up to his knees in rags and he accrued almost every single negative Moodle. But I got plenty of thread which I then used to train tailoring in the evening. As I prepared my breakfast, Weakman reached level 7 in cooking. Then I went outside to fix his extreme boredom. Is that gonna make you less bored? 
Hmm, is that gonna make you less bored? Like a teenage bully, I fought every Zed on the parking lot, until he was bored no more. Then I drove south to check on my traps, forging as I went. With boredom fixed, I had to tackle his depression now. Yeah, I'd be depressed too if I realized that all the world's beautiful ladies have now turned into zombies. But this was America, so I had pills to fix the issue. Then I spent the rest of the evening training tailoring. I grabbed a gas mask the next morning so I could safely return to the corridors of death. I ripped apart zombie clothing, then I dismantled their wristwatches and stole the maggots riding over their bodies, keeping an eye out on any good loot. Look at this, fishing tackle and a trap box. Oh, that's a good find. While the mask protected weak men from corpse sickness, he still got tired pretty fast, and I had to retreat back home where I washed his disgusting clothing. I went to check on my traps again on day 315, adding the new box trap to the mix. Then I got rudely interrupted when I got to my fishing shack. Ooh, hello. These guys all want to go fishing, is that how it is? It was a good day for fishing, alas, my rod broke, and boys, that can naturally happen as we age. Then I spent the evening training tailoring, weak man was once again bored the next day, so I decided to finally deal with it. I drove to the weed store, popping zeds like all ripe tomatoes, then I snuck inside. Last time I was here, I only grabbed skill videos, but now I took every single VHS tape, so weak man could finally watch movies when he was bored again. In true Slavic fashion, I then also broke into the liquor store next door and grabbed all the beer I could carry. Look at the stack of the goods that we have. That's awesome. I also stole a cupboard and a sink from the neighbors to get another water source. I began day 317 by harvesting potatoes, and because it was raining heavily outside, I decided to stay inside to train tailoring again and finally reached level 8. Then in the afternoon, I began studying the next book. I drove back south to the wilderness the next morning, dispatching zombies crowding the road as I went. I grabbed a fresh rabbit, then I decided to go on a cleaning streak. And noise, and noise. Inspired by Kill Bill, Weakman turned the path to his fishing shack into one bloody mess. And if I learned one thing from my time cleaning urinals at the local strip club, I learned that bloody mess requires a hazmat suit. Alas, I didn't have one, so instead I washed all my clothing in the evening and got a new haircut. The next morning, I inflated all the tires on my car again. Then I went on a scouting mission. Oh, I see many runners among these. Holy shit. That is... More than 1% runners right there. I drove through the thick hordes and the real face of Louisville finally presented itself to me. And I have to admit, it was one ugly motherfucker of a face. The police station I wanted to check out was overrun, so I decided to circle back home, which went far from smoothly. Don't you dare stop. Oh, just push through. Holy fuck. So that ended being a trip to hell and back, and I had no idea how to approach that station. But I did know my truck needed new tires, so I went to the mall parking lot on day 320, which was getting crowded. After dispatching the stragglers, I then turned into a true Balkan mechanic, stealing parts from every car around me. I also spotted a prepper Zed. And yoink. He's got a machete on his back. I borrowed his stalker knife and then brought all the stolen goods back to my garage where I replaced my crappy tires. It was time to go on an adventure on day 321 as I decided to go all the way to the military compound at Louisville entrance. I drove for hours through the infested suburbs until I was forced to stop. Alright zombies, show me what you've got. I cleared the checkpoint, then I pushed through, driving along the narrow corridor. I stopped for a quick nap, then I proceeded on foot, because I knew there was a small housing area up ahead. I cleared the area, finding little of any use, then I spent the night there. The next morning, I returned to my car with sledge in hand. As soon as I breached the fence, they came, but I was ready. Then I pushed through and repeated the whole process again. Only one fence remained, and I decided to take a quick nap before continuing on. The road brought me to my destination, and I descended on poor zombies like a thirsty man but not thirsty for water, no, thirsty for thick thighs. I saw you run, you motherfucker. Show yourself. Ah, oh, there he goes. I blasted my way into the compound, clearing the highway and making sure I can sleep in peace, so I could fully loot the place the next day. Oh man, the loot is not nearly as good here as it used to be. This is kind of fucking sad. I went through every crate and locker, and truth be told, I spent way more ammo getting in there than what I got out of it. Zombies were not really a problem besides a couple of stragglers. Ah, uh, for fuck's sake, bro. Where'd you come from? And naturally, Zombie decided to troll me as well. 
Oh, come on. Luckily, not many Zeds remain, so I spend the rest of the evening looting the last tents, finding barely any ammo and mostly just military clothing. And on the morning of day 324, it was time to leave. I found crap shit here, but you know what? It was worth it for the experience. Let's go home now. But a peaceful drive back home was not on Weakman's agenda, and so I stopped at a hunting store along the way, where a giant horde awaited me. Encircled, I had to pull some sketchy maneuvers to avoid becoming corpse starch, but Weakman didn't survive for more than 300 days to turn into a walker now and once again he was victorious now just watch how this is gonna give me more good stuff than the entire military complex well it didn't. In fact, I only found a little bit of ammo. It was really time to go home after, and I managed to reach safety with barely any fuel remaining in my truck. The next day, I unloaded the goods all over my home. Then I created a new syringe and cooked a delicious rabbit stir-fry. Naturally, that made weak men very bored, so I put on a movie and finished the tailoring book. I tried on some of the new clothing I brought back home the next day. Oh my god, I look like a freaking Teletubby in this. <laughs> Then I went to refuel the almost empty car. In the afternoon, I drove to my trap place, unfortunately finding them all empty. On day 327, I went to chop down a couple of trees and then brought the wood to the corridors of death. After that, I looted the rest of the apartments. Hell yeah, let's go. Butter, found you. Following a quick nap, I grabbed a sledge to make a hole on the other side of the building and then I extended the skyway which brought me close to my next target before I ran out of wood. So I chopped some more the next morning and extended the skyway further. Now these these guys I can shoot. Oh, that's good. I connected the last plank and jumped inside. There weren't that many in the hallway, but I needed to push as fast and as hard as possible to make it to the stairs on the other side of the building. I was almost too late, but I managed to defeat the encroaching horde and then took out my sledge. Oh, come on, come on, come on, do it, 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 do it. Let's go. I then made sure the floor was safe before returning home to watch some TV. I grabbed more wood on day 329 and then extended the skyway to another building across, actually reaching level 8 carpentry in the process. I had a great vantage vantage point from that roof, but I'm not sure where to go next. There is no easy way to go anywhere. There's no tall buildings nearby, unfortunately. So I went back home to plan my next step. And my next step took advantage of that great vantage point. I grabbed my sniper rifle and uninstalled the suppressor. Then I perched on the skyway to have some fun. Oh, that is, that is pretty loud. I sniped everything that crawled, moving along my highway to heaven. But it was not heaven for the walking dead. Oh no, my bullets sent them straight back where they came from. Hell. I think I kinda ran out of targets. Well, I didn't actually, and I continued blasting for a while, before the tired weak man finally got a moment to rest. I realized I didn't have that carpentry level 5 book I needed, so I decided to drive to the nearby bookstore next. Damn, I forgot how good this gun sounds. I blasted the few Zeds around, then snuck inside. Alas, the book was not there. I had an idea to check the mall library next, but... Yeah, the mall is being the mall again. We're not gonna go look for a book in here. So instead, I returned back home, where I repaired my generator and harvested a fresh batch of tomatoes. Then I washed my clothes, exercised, and watched a movie to relax. But like a stuck dildo, that book kept on nagging me. So I decided to check the small mall bookstore on the next day. Ah, uh, here they come from the upstairs once again. I dispatched the up above neighbors, then I snuck into the shop and got lucky. So in the evening, I just relaxed in my rack room and studied carpentry. It was day 333 next and I wanted to make it special, so I decided to descend into another apartment building. The moment of truth, let's see, uh, go back, go back. Clearly that didn't work, so I made another hole in the corner of the roof and jumped in. The apartment was pretty damn full, but nothing weak man couldn't handle. I then pushed down the hallway to the stairs, alas, the zombies beat me to it. The second I move back, this is gonna be a problem. There's a runner. Let's go, we got a runner. Again, I turned the place into a corridor of death, blanketing the whole floor with corpses. I fought until he was too tired and pulled back for a quick nap. Then I tried my luck again. This is the absolute fucking worst corner. The dad pushed me back once again, but weak men fought like a caged Russian man until he finally sledged the axes downstairs. I returned the next morning to clear the now inaccessible apartments. There were still a lot of zombies trapped inside and it took me most of the day to clear the last of them. Let's fix that fucking boredom, shall we? There you go. But of course, weak man was now so desensitized to the world, a couple of zombies in his face could not face him. But I got phased when I found fresh cheese on one of the corpses and he finally got over his boredom with a movie night. The next day I harvested fresh cabbages, washed my clothes, then I baked a delicious bread with seeds and I added that cheese to make it into a perfect lunch. Look at that. 
cheese, tomato, and rabbit burger. Then I spent the evening studying carpentry again. I finished the book the next morning, then I threw myself completely into the Skyway project. I chopped some trees, then began extending my pathway to heaven. Planks were of course the issue, because I couldn't just jump down to chop trees, so I dismantled everything made of wood in the apartments. I built over the houses because I dared not walk on their sketchy roofs. Then I continued to dismantle and build, dismantle and build on day 337. Ah yeah, we have quite a groove below us, hey, hey, how's it going zombies? And in the evening I made it to the roof of the next housing complex, then I decided to return home to refresh and grab some more food. I gathered more wood the next morning, then I continued to extend the skyway, actually reaching level 9 in sneaking and level 8 in light footed in the process. The next morning I also unlocked sprinting level 4 as I reached my next roof target, then I returned back home to study the next sprinting book. I started day 340 by tending to my farm, then I went back to reading until I finish the book. Then I relaxed by watching TV while enjoying a bottle of beer. But I was back to work the next morning. I built stairs which allowed me to cross to another rooftop. And now that big building is the next target. But to get there I needed to dismantle a lot more furniture to get as high as possible. On day 342 I actually hit sneaking level 10 while building a ladder which allowed me to close in on my next target. Which I then reached early the next morning. The next apartment complex was closed but I knew I'd have to fight for it. So I got as close as possible then I made a long skyway trip back home to grab my shotgun and ammo. I also chopped some wood and watched a movie to relax. I was back on day 344 and I broke into the building where max level sneaking definitely helped. The sneakiest motherfucker left alive, let's fucking go. I secured the top floor but because it was all so quiet I decided to push for one more. I rebuilt the floor, dispatched the zeds and then it was all mine. To get to the next roof I needed to destroy a wall. Then I waved at the zombies below and pushed forward. You probably guessed by now what I was doing and yes I wanted to build the skyway all the way into the city center where my last target awaited. You probably think me stupid for doing all of this but I'll have you know I was considered a scholarly time back in my day on the account of knowing how to cuss in three languages. But of course I still had a very long way to go. On day 345 I gained access to two more roofs on my path to glory. I reached level 9 in carpentry and then I spent the evening reading a book to relax. But the next day I was ready to fight. I breached the window into a building and then this happened. I didn't even realize these guys are actually below me. So I just added rooftop axes then I set my eyes on my next target which I knew would be very dangerous to break into. But that didn't stop me. I breached my way in directly next to one of the stairway access points and quickly destroyed it. Then I started blasting and pushed in. With each broken door I passed the chance of Schrodinger zombies increased and I was sure I was going to get jumped. Dead man walking. I pushed as far as I dared, then I had to retreat on the account of weak men being, well, weak. So I spent the evening reading instead. My new corridors of death awaited me the next morning, and I instantly went about my bloody business. Holy shit, that was a lot in that one room. Are you kidding me? But not even hidden hordes could stop weak men, for weak men had a plan. As soon as the hallway was decently clear, I broke the floor down the middle and I took over half of the apartments, leaving the rest to the dead. I made sure they were all empty, then I built access to the roof so I could make my way to the great and glorious future, the giant building across the road. But a wake up call the next morning wasn't so glorious. Oof. Sleeping in here makes him queasy? So I grabbed a gas mask from a fireman and then continued building the skyway. The queasy modal disappeared high up in the sky and I almost made it to my next target. I broke in the next morning hearing a lot of noise coming from the inside and soon they started edging out. They poured out of the building like dicks on fire and I kept them back on the narrow bridge and luckily they had some troubles with pathing. A lot of them waiting there which meant they were constantly getting stuck inside and they only sporadically made it out. But still, their numbers were great and more were coming up from the streets, so I had to abandon this building. Come on lady, there you go, she fell down. Alright, let's dismantle this. And thusly, I had to gather more planks and then build the ladders. And those ladders brought me to the roof on day 351, which I then used to access another building across with eyes on my next target. But that place required double ladders again. I wouldn't blame weak men if he got bored because building this skyway is actually mind-numbingly boring. While it might have been boring, it at least kept him alive. Although when I breached into the tall building on day 353, zombies did their very best to make him unalive. I popped those with there to charge me, then I gathered my courage and pushed in. The corridors were slightly crowded, but nothing weak man couldn't handle until there's a runner. Got a fucking runner, boys. 
Oh shit, that's a lot. It was as if the floodgates have opened. And once again, weak man had to retreat back to his scaffolding. Fuck, fuck, fuckity fuck, fuck. My ammo was running critically low, but I didn't want to give up on this building. In fact, I was relying on its furniture to bring me all the way to the police station that was now so tauntingly close. I blasted all those who came at me, but in the evening, I finally had to retreat, but not defeat it, no. A tactical retreat all the way back home to restock on ammo and switch to a different sidearm. It took me half a day to return to Nakatomi Plaza, and by that point, weak man was of course very tired already. But that didn't stop me, and I pushed deeper in. My hopes and dreams of the place being almost empty turned into thin smoke like cabbage farts. These fuckers know exactly where they have to go. Fucking hell, man. I fought for hours, trying to push back the endless hordes until in the end I had to admit defeat and get out. But then, this happened. No. What? How the fuck did you fall down? I had no planks to climb up, and jumping down would mean certain death. I did have a sledge on me, so I made a hole to see what's inside. Naturally, there were zombies below, and I had no idea what to do, so I tried sleeping on the cold, hard, wet ground. Which meant weak men awoke ridiculously tired, so that didn't help. I was sure I was dead, but there was nothing else to do but to drop down. Somehow still alive, I hid into the side room to dismantle furniture. But of course, they came. Oh, hello. That's a few. I spent half of the day fighting and dismantling, until I had enough planks to build the ladder back up. But that was just one level, so I had to fight my way to some more furniture to dismantle, with never a second of peace. Come on, last two planks, just pick them up. Let's get the fuck out of here. That allowed me to finish the second ladder, and at last, after a whole day wasted and 15,000 zombie kills reached, I could go back to safety. After that absolutely insane day, I returned to Nakatomi Tower to finish what I started. I took risks, and I pushed hard, and weak men had to do all of that on an empty stomach. Alas, no matter how many I put down, more and more came up. I said they're con- But I did not give up, and finally I fought my way to the stairs and broke the tile. I cleared the stragglers, then I got very drunk on the account of that being the only nutrition in the whole top floor of the place. I then gained access to the roof, crossed to the next skyscraper, and finally... Ladies and gentlemen, I can- With my goal in sight, I broke more furniture and began building the skyway to the station, crossing a heavily infested street in the process. I am like two tiles away from reaching my goal. The next day, I ran all the way back home to my base. I washed my dirty clothing, cut my hair and trimmed my beard, and then I built a couple of noise makers. I also grabbed my sniper rifle and all the ammo I could carry. Then I relaxed with a movie night. I made my way back on day 359, unfortunately having to drop the second backpack I was carrying. I left it behind for now and built the last two tiles of the skyway. This thing below me is the police station. And you know what? I'll have some fun with it. And indeed, I had my fun, sniping zombies from the rooftop until late at night, mowing down anything that moved, killing hundreds of the walking dead. The next morning, I went back to grab the backpack I had to drop, making the long skyway trip once again. We went from all the way here to here. Pretty much across the whole town, the skyway goes. I then returned to the police station in the afternoon. Zombies, this is my revenge for all the bad things you have done to me over all these long days. And indeed, I had my revenge, turning hordes into nothing else but minced meat. Also, PZ told me I've now survived for one year, but because it counts each month as 30 days, that meant I still had 5 days to go. I tested the noisemaker the next day, but the real noisemaker has been my gun all along. More noise? Oh yes. That should bring the hordes. And indeed, the hordes were brought. As you can imagine, I spent the whole day dealing with them, actually reaching 16,000 kills in the process and using most of my 308 ammo. But just shooting wasn't all that fun, so I returned to base on day 362 and grabbed the grenades I've been carrying with me since like day 90. But when I tested them, they turned out to be a disappointment. All the Zeds are at the car. Throw it there. Whoa, yeah, that was way further away. So instead, I switched to a Molotov, which took two hours to fall from the roof, and by then, the Zeds were gone. I promised to do better the next day, and I attracted the group with a noisemaker, and then went for a Molotov. Where did you throw that, bro? 
Yes, I sucked, but at long last, I got the Zeds and the building on fire. Well, I also cooked a bunch of my ammo. I tried to make them spread the fire as much as possible, and the south building was well and truly burning when my game crashed once again. The fire and Zeds were gone, and disappointed, I decided to leave the place. There was one last thing I had to do, so I said goodbye to my cozy Louisville home, then I hit the road. It was long and full of zombies, but as always, my heavily armored vehicle managed to push through, although there were some close calls around the old Valley Station mall. Oh, there is a lot of zombies here. Holy fuck. Maybe I should not have driven down here. I stopped at the West Point Bridge to refuel my truck, but then, after a whole day of driving, I was finally in Moldra. Would you look at that? Home sweet home. And then it was the final day of Weak Man's adventures. He has survived for a whole year. His skills went from absolute zeros across the board to something a true strong man would be proud of. He killed over 16,000 zombies and he built two beautiful and cozy homes. He survived a million helicopters. He survived a long cold winter. He survived Louisville and he survived zombies learning to run. Thank you Enlisted for sponsoring this video. And my friends, what are you waiting for? Go play Enlisted today for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox. And if you click my link in the description or pinned comment below and use it to register right now, you get a bonus pack of goodies including weapons and armor, in-game currency and premium account time. And thank you to my channel members and Patreon supporters. Nuke Feanor, Ryan Lucian, Drosmo Jenkins, The Grotling Hobbs L. Johnson, Capablanca, Drunk on Live, Kuro Kurosawa, Stoyan Stoyanov, Fox the Ghost, Brand Bartlett, Shush Girl, Polish Spaniard, Tibor Hlavac and Britain the Roos. There it is 9 in the morning on 9th of July exactly one year since the story began it now finally ends thank you everyone for watching